It's time for Twig This Week in Google. Stacy has the day off. Mike Elgin joins Jeff Jarvis, Ant Pruitt. Lots to talk about. Moxie Marlin Spikes leaving Signal. What he thinks of Web3, what uh, Mr. Elgin thinks of Web3, and why you don't need to think about Web3. Samsung, a no-show on their press conference. Those cats who love hot satellite dishes and the worst of CES. It's all coming up next on Twig. <laughs> Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twit. This is Twig. This Week in Google, episode 646, recorded Wednesday, January 12th, 2022. The opposite of long COVID. This Week in Google is brought to you by Streak. Whether you're tracking sales, fundraising, hiring, or support, Streak is a CRM that will help you stay on top of all your processes directly inside Gmail. Get 20% off your first year of their pro plan, their most popular option, by going to streak.com slash twig. And by New Relic. That 9 p.m. call is just waiting to happen. Get New Relic before it does and you can get access to the whole new relic platform and 100 gigabytes of data free forever no credit card required when you sign up at newrelic.com slash twig and by code academy join over 50 million people learning to code with code academy and see where coding can take you get 15 percent off your code academy pro membership when you go to codecademy.com and use the promo code twig it's time for Twig. This week at Google, the show we cover the Googleverse, the Twitterverse, the Metaverse, and the Metaverse. <laughs> Used to be the Facebookverse, and now Meta owns it. Uh, although they may not own WhatsApp uh, for much longer, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Ant Pruitt's here from Hands On Photography. Hello, Ant. Hello, Mr. Laporte. How you be, sir? I am great. I just drank a bunch of uh, nootropic energy stuff, so if I start to get strange... Uh, you'll, start to start so to just be another Wednesday. Is that what it'll you're be? Saying? Just, just another, another Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> also with us, the Leonard Tao Professor for Journalistic Innovation at the Newmark. Oh, <laughs> Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York. Hello, Jeff. Yes. Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you. And uh, Stacy. Uh, it was a little under the weather. We're giving her the day off. But good news, we got Mike Elgin in her place. Yay! He's back in the U.S., mikeelgin.substack.com, home of his newsletter. Hey, Mike. Hey, how you doing? Are you going to do this you standing do up? Yes. Wow. That is, that is a physical humble brag. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought about doing that before. No, nah, bro. No, 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 no. Get a I seat. Spend I, the truth is, I spend so much time sitting; it's really almost dangerous. So, any chance I get to stand up, that's it's great. Smart. I, I that's don't like why to, you have a rear end is to use it. <laughs> I like your attitude. We got these uh, these uh, you know elevating tables. I guess the theory was that I could stand up and do this, but then we you realized the table going us. up is your chair going down. <laughs> well, the funny thing also is. As I get older, I'm, I'm going to blame the cushions in the chair becoming uh, less resilient, but I think it's actually me shrinking. I'm starting to, <laughs> starting to get dwarfed by this chair. I'm just getting tinier and tinier in the chair. Pretty soon it's just going to be me. And now it's time for Twig! <laughs> ah. right, Leo, 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 if I may. If yes. I may. yes. I mean, in the old days, we remember we used to have unboxing. Yeah, you got something? I have an unbagging. Unbagging. Very important oh unbagging. What you we got in the bag? Cock Cacio yes. e Pepe Puffs yes. from Trader I, Joe's. I Did they send them to them. you? or uh, No, 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 no. I've held on to them, though. Hashtag sponsored. Or, no, you bought these with no. your real money. Right. So this is this is my first try. I, I, I could have opened them two days ago, but I said, no, I'm going to try them on the show. Because, of yes. course, just for background, Jeff loves the Cacio e Pepe real for real at uh, Trader Joe's. Is this... Is this anything like survey says the Cacho Pepe in that's uh, in the bag at Trader Joe's? <laughs> Judging from first Jeff's moment, face, <laughs> it's a little odd to get a hold of, but the aftertaste is wonderful. Aftertaste is wonderful. 
That's good. So we'll put that on the bag. <laughs> <laughs> the aftertaste. My wife is wonderful. Went to buy them, and the nice lady she deals with all the time at Prairie Joe's saw her reaching for them and said, "Oh no!" My wife thought, "Oh no, there's something wrong with them, or they're going to go to this She said, "The lady said those are so addictive." Uh oh. Oh, God, he's going to crunch the whole show, isn't he? Oh, this will be great. <laughs> Somebody's saying the Taco Bell now has subscriptions. That might be something you'd be interested in. Yes, they do. <laughs> but for tacos, not burritos. If they did a burrito subscription, I'm in. I, it's, oh like a bur it's like a taco a day or something. Yeah, for 30 days yeah, of tacos for 10 bucks. Uh, it's the Taco Lovers Pass. Choose from one of seven select tacos. But a taco at Taco Bell is like a 30 cent. I mean, it, yeah, it's, exactly. a, it's a taco lover's pass as in pass as in. I'm going to pass if I love tacos. They're, they're yeah. so tiny. You only get like two ounces of meat on them. Too, I, and so. I wouldn't even right. use the word meat for whatever that is. I said air quotes. <laughs> air quotes. <laughs> well, you could tell how much it's worth. 30 days for $10. <laughs> Do the math. <laughs> Okay. Taco Bell that. is the master, though, of marketing, aren't they? They really... Uh, yeah. Oh, they are. They're kind of amazing. But they used to be, you know, I, I've loved them for years and years and years and years. People made fun of me, and now it's hip. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Well, thanks to marketing. It's hip like yeah. Mentos got hip, thanks to marketing. Yeah. In the early days of MTV, I know this because uh, the guy who uh, was our program director at uh, Tech TV used to... Was a programmer at uh, MTV, and his he said... Mentos before MTV was grandma's thing. It was the thing you'd get in the cut glass crystal when you went to yeah. grandma's house, the candy no yep. one wanted. He yep. said, but then they started advertising on MTV, the fresh maker. That's right. I remember and that. it become, <laughs> became suddenly hip. So it's really, it's just marketing, you know? And, and now, by the way, it's back to grandma's, except grandma watched MTV. <laughs> <laughs> 30 years ago. <laughs> uh, what goes around gets old. <laughs> Grandma, grandmas never end. Uh, I am happy to tell you, uh, proud to report, according to Mike Elgin in the computerworld.com, you can safely ignore Web 3. Oh, appreciate it. You got to tell the rest of the web that. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, it's funny, we had, uh, on Sunday, we had, we, we, it would have been our futurists panel. We had a science fiction author. We had Kevin Rose. Everybody got sick. So it ended up just being a priest and Amy Webb, who's an actual free futurist. So I kind of thought it was like, well, we got the medieval point of view and we got the future. But one, one of the very first things we talked extensively about is this notion of Web3. Maybe, Mike, because you wrote this article, you can explain yeah. what Web3 yeah. is. Well, okay. Uh, so Web3 is the idea that the next version of the web is going to be based on uh, the blockchain, uh, tokenization, and distributed uh, Decentralized, networks. yeah. Decentralized, t radically decentralized. Interestingly, you'll notice that the mission of the Web3, decentralization, uh, power to the people instead of the corporations and the governments, this was the this was the mission of the what formerly called the internet. This is the the techno utopian hippies that created TCP/IP and all the protocols that that our current internet and later web would be built out of. Uh, that was their intent to you know and and remember uh, John Perry Barlow's manifesto where he said you know we won't be subject to governments we won't be controlled by anyone. Well, that turned out to not work out so well because, um, as the Web3 enthusiasts will tell you, Web2, the current web, where content creators uh, ha have to deal with these gigantic corporations that really have all the keys and, and, and control everything. Well, the problem with this whole thing, the, the idea of rebuilding uh, the web based on NFTs, blockchains, cryptocurrency, et cetera, et cetera, is that it's fundamentally incompatible with human nature. So this was and the by the way the nature of technology, but I'll, but go on Ex and the and, nature and of business. Yeah. We'll get there. Yeah. Ex exactly, Jeff. And this was this is where Jack Dorsey chimed in and basically said that look, uh, because Jack Dorsey is in fact committed to decentralized uh, uh, communication, which is why they're working on what is it called, Jeff? They, they're working on the uh, uh, blue sky, uh, blue sky. Right, which is actually this, 
a dis- decentralized project. His point is that the problem with uh, with the vision of the utopian Web3 crowd is that everybody wants to invest in it because they want to make money, which means they you have these corporations that want to grow and profit heavily involved, heavily in control, because that's where the money's coming from. And so, as he said, they'll, the Web3 will never escape their incentives. Their incentives are to use their power that they have for, from their investment to direct the nature of these products to profit themselves, right? This is in direct contradiction to the notion of this democratic, the people in charge, the crowd is in charge kind of ethos. So it doesn't really work. And, and I think Jack Dorsey had a, a great point uh, in that regard. The other two ways that it doesn't work is that the giant tech corporations that in fact do control many of the services that we use aren't going to go along. And the public is not going to go along because it's all too complicated. People people don't want, and this is um, sort of touches on what Jeff wrote about uh, brilliantly, I might add, in his, bu- in, in his uh, buzz machine piece, um, which is that human nature doesn't really, you know, content creators want to create content. They don't want to be mucking around with running their own servers, with doing all this stuff. They're not going to go along with this. And so it's sure. kind of a non-starter. But the, the problem, the beef I have um, uh, with the journalism around this and the same something similar is happening with the metaverse idea is that every cryptocurrency thing, every blockchain thing, every tokenized <laughs> thing is called Web3. Well, it doesn't really mean anything if we're just talking about individual applications running on the Web2. Web3 right? is kind of how Taco Bell got cool is marketing. It, yeah, know. it's the 5G yeah. of the Internet. It's just <laughs> verbiage. But, five, but 5G is, yeah. You, you, you I could mean, argue 5G is actually something. But we we will actually can actually <laughs> connect over 5G. Yeah, yeah. Whereas whereas the idea that you know it's it's a very different proposition to have what we have now, which is some cryptocurrency stuff, some blockchain chain stuff. We have NFTs services around those things. We have Bitcoin wallets. We have all that stuff. There's a big difference between that, which is inevitable, and that, that all that stuff will grow as well, and having the internet be based on that sort of thing. Okay, that that's the part that's not going to happen ever. Right. And and if that isn't the Web3 and some people, you know, nobody really fully agrees on what this is. But if that isn't the Web3, then it's just it's just a word that means all that stuff that the Bitcoin bros love. Jack's uh, tweet is the short version, mm-hmm. which is you don't own Web3. The VCs and their limited partners do. It will never escape their incentives. It's ultimately a centralized entity with a different label. Know what you're getting into. Uh, and of course, he was immediately um blocked by uh Mark Andreessen, Mark Andreessen because yeah. Mark Andreessen uh, and Andreessen Horowitz are basically the chief proponents of uh web3 it's kind of a portfolio uh uh deal for them i yeah. think maybe the long version of this which is kind of technical uh but i think worth reading is Mark's, Moxie Marlin Spikes um blog post yes. at moxie.org oh, it's brilliant the yeah. guy that resigned yeah, he's a former yeah. CEO of uh, Signal. He invented Signal As of and is two days ago. Yeah, has passed yeah. it on, which is completely appropriate. We'll talk about that in a bit. Ooh. But he makes, I think, I'll see if I can summarize this. He makes the point that uh, one, and this is really important, people do not want to run their own servers, right? And they never will. Uh, I happen to run my own server, but I understand why nobody with any idea of you know public scaling or anything is going to run their own, even. Big companies run their servers on Amazon. That's why Amazon's so successful. Uh, so that's problem number one: is you can't decentralize something that's by its very nature centralized. You're not going to get people to run their own servers. He also points out, and this is this is a deeper insight, but actually really good. That a pro, and then this is going to be a little hard to understand. A protocol moves more slowly than a platform. And to give an example that really is uh, a germane to our audience, IRC is a platform. It's been around for 30 plus years. Um, And he says people are still trying to standardize sharing a video reliably over IRC. Meanwhile, Slack lets you create, lets you not only do that, but create a custom reaction emoji based on your face. Because it's a it's it's a it's a platform, not a a company. It's It's a company that is in control. Yes. Centralized control. It's it's, and that's control enables that that speed. So he says, if something's truly decentralized, it becomes very difficult to change and often remains stuck in time. This is a brilliant way to put it. I thought that was the best of the post. Yeah, I think a really, 
great insight. Um, but and once you understand that, that, that makes makes you, you realize why it's hard to hold on just a sec. I'll, I'll get to you in a second. It's hard to to propose a decentralized web because nobody's going to run their own surfers, and it's not going to move along very quickly because the platforms are just going to leapfrog right. it. He also talks about and kind of peripherally making an NFT. He makes an NFT. I'll tell you what, how this ties in in a second. But he makes an NFT that looks different depending on where you look at it. Oh, so right. So yeah. the first one is on OpenSea. The second view, same NFT, is on Rarible. And if you do it in your wallet, you get a poop emoji. <laughs> well, the, the, uh, and the, punchline, the punchline of all this is that when you buy an NFT, what you actually buy, what's registered on the blockchain, is a URL. Is a link. So if and, somebody's and furthermore, bill, so he's able to change this because you know he can change it depending on where you come to it. But then the punchline on this one is OpenSea blocked it because they didn't. They said, well, you violated terms of service in some vague way. And as soon as it's blocked on OpenSea, which is one platform that is very popular for NFTs, none of those versions of it got seen because. It turns out crypto wallets don't do the rendering. Nothing does the rendering. They all use OpenSea's API to find out what's in the NFT. So centralization strikes again. It's completely centralized. And if OpenSea blocks it, it's gone. Which really uh, is, I think, problematic for this whole uh, notion. So, uh, I'm sorry. So then... Wait, 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 we got to go go pop yeah. the stack yeah. in order. Uh, yeah. So this is a... <laughs> <laughs> this is a LIFO stack. Uh, I think I owe you a uh, yes, comment first, Aunt Pruitt. Go ahead. Well, there's two things. Has anyone even considered where the people running the infrastructure stands on all of this? We moved to say this whole Web3 decentralized. That stuff still has to run on top of well, infrastructure that's yes. going to be controlled by big companies. Guess what? What are their thoughts? Those people are the ones promoting this. <laughs> Yeah, ah. Like Andreessen Horowitz. <laughs> okay. And you know why? Because they're going to they make money. It. Who makes yeah. money in yeah. NFTs? People like OpenSea, the ones who mint it, not the people so much selling it. Okay, you now, know, and popping. Then I also oh, okay. Thought, yeah, go ahead. I'm, you're not fully popped. Go ahead. With the thing <laughs> with um, OpenSea blocking it, uh, that sort of reminded me of Apple Podcasts and how Apple Podcasts seems to be the end all be all for the podcast industries. When you go and look up, uh, a certain podcast application or whatever, they're usually pulling from Apple's, Apple's database right. instead of going to look at the actual creator's source. Of course. And, and that, it, that's still sort of centralized, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I popped the stack and now it's Pop. Mike Elgin next. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it feels to me like, and, you, and you've mentioned the idea that cryptocurrency is a, a, a kind of a... Um, Ponzi a scheme? Pyramid's Ponzi scheme or yes. pyramid scheme or whatever. Yeah. And it seems to me that the people who are investing in this sort of thing want massive universal buy-in because that's right. very profitable that's in general across the yeah. board. So, so this, this, so they've got this sort of double think, sort of self-fulfilling kind of language thing going, where they say, where they make the claim that Web three is all this stuff that I'm invested in, and that's the future of the web, and so <clears throat> ordinary consumers of technology news will get the sense from the incredible hype around this concept that web three is the future. So I better start investing in all these startups. And it just seems like a kind of a, it seems like a, a grand marketing scheme, similar to the metaverse thing. And I don't know if we want to talk about that later, but, but it seems, seems like a grand marketing scheme to legitimize something that is really that, that a certain minority of people are super passionate about. And the vast majority couldn't care less. They don't understand it. They don't care, et cetera. And they're trying to get the masses, sort of the, the, the majority of people to just go along with it, to invest in it, to make the world safe for this sort of thing for their own profit. I think I mean, it's always it easier like. to market something that doesn't exist. Yes. It's the Vanna, it's the Vanna White principle. When um, somebody asked Peter Jennings why everybody liked him, he says, the Vanna White principle. Vanna never says anything. So you project upon her yeah. your, your yeah. At the attributes you like. You assume uh -huh. that she's like you. Uh -huh. And I think that that's the same thing with this marketing. You assume it's what you want. 
Yeah. Uh, because it isn't anything. You, The best paragraph in your uh, column, uh, Mike, is the two biggest buzzwords in tech right now, the metaverse and Web3, describe platforms that don't yeah. exist, aren't yeah. expected mm -hmm. to exist even by boosters for a decade at least and probably will never exist. Of the top 100 concerns for tech pros, Web3 is 101. <laughs> <laughs> All right, popping the stack, Jeff Jarvis. So then I read... Um, it took, it took me, I got it. Moxie's piece is really smart, yeah. but, but it's difficult to get through. I mean, I was yes. wondering whether to assign it to students. It's, it, it, it's, it's very dense with ideas and technology. So I, I read it a couple of times hoping I would get it. And then, then Matt Mullenweg, who I admire greatly, uh, founder of, of WordPress, <clears throat> tweeted this. Also very people, smart, very, very smart. good guy. Yeah. And we didn't, you know, yeah. And we didn't talk about it last week, but there was a really good profile of him in protocol. Yes. Um, yes. Which I highly recommend. Yeah. So Matt said, people seem to be redefining web 2.0 as Facebook, et cetera, that own data. But web 2.0 at the time was platforms like WordPress, Odeo, Six Apart, Flickr, Technorati, and Delicious that had open data and interoperate. So I, I was thinking about this and then I started riffing on it on Twitter uh, that became a post uh, that said that I, I think that we make a mistake here in thinking that web one, two, well, anyway, one, two, three is, is a progression. Mm -hmm. uh, second, we make a mistake in thinking that we're at web two or three anyway. We're at web dot zero, 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 one or zero, 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 one, two. Um, and, and, and you know my shtick, Gutenberg, it's early days. 1475, you've heard that spiel before. But same true with the web, right? It's very, very early. We don't know what it is yet. It's not as like we've, we've graduated from something. And the problem with periodization, the problem with thinking that, that there are, the dark ages were there and they were worthless um, and, and the Renaissance was the good thing, is the same problem with saying, well, Web 2.0 should be discarded and Web 1.0 should be discarded because now we're Web 3.0. No, we're not. And what not Matt yet. said here, what struck me, is there's things to learn. And in a way, what Moxie asks for at the end of his wonderful piece, in a way, Matt and open source um, answer the questions. Because I remember when when the Polar, Polaris VC VCs who called me when when they were thinking about investing in WordPress and they did and they said is it nuts he's going to be open source but how does that how does that work uh, and I said he's already hmm. beat movable type because he's put something out there that because it's open source spreads widely how much of the web yeah. does he now serve and gets updated and so in a sense we've seen Web 3.0 it was Web 1.0 it was called open source. Right. With, with a similar mission of, you know, power to the people and, and you know, the crowd and, you know, uh, also to Wikipedia, for that matter, uh, interested, passionate people will have a bigger influence than the casual user, et cetera, et cetera, to build this thing without top down, you know, policy. Yes. Making. Yes. It's a creator's tool. Right. Exactly. Right. Yes. But but what, what's what one of the differences, though, is that the whole web, the whole open source phenomenon was so much less naive than the Web3 phenomenon. For example, one of the big benefits of blockchains is you can is that is that the ledger is permanent and public, right? The greatest doxing tool ever created. You can you can make a purchase somebody's NFT and as part of your notes, <laughs> you can dox somebody to smithereens and nobody could ever remove that information oh that's interesting ever yeah yeah the, Stuff the, like the that. blockchain What's is this? permanent yeah right another one is like mm. oh we'll use the blockchain to cure fake wow. news what we'll do is we'll make sure that every source of content is registered on the blockchain and then we'll know exactly where it comes from well that doesn't address fake news at all because the problem with fake news is that is not that people are misled about where it comes from is that they, they think the new york times and the atlantic are fake news and they think everything on 4chan is real Right, that's the problem. Blockchain isn't yeah. going to solve that at all. So True. there are no solutions to the problems of of moderation. Like fa fa you know, everybody likes to dump all over Facebook for moderation, but either they do something about hate speech or when they don't, we get to yell at Facebook. Either way, that's better than just hate speech running rampant and sort of, kind of somehow we're kind of in charge of it, you know, uh, as a group. Like I don't, there, there's... Nobody has articulated how that's supposed to how that's supposed to work. Other other than other than we're all blockchain 
enthusiasts and so we're all uh, people of goodwill which was essentially how the original internet was supposed to you know, you know they didn't foresee spam they didn't foresee any of this stuff yeah because they thought wow once information is free then everybody will be on their best behavior you talked about marketing uh previously and i think it makes perfect sense that they they would be able to capitalize on it because of this being a pandemic and where people are emotionally and socially these days with the whole resignation and wanting to just, you know, take more control of things for themselves instead of depending on their, you know, their jobs and whatnot. And then there's also the group that say, man, I, I'm, I remember Bitcoin umpteen years ago. And man, if I had just put $10 in it back then, I would oh, be yeah. rich and blah, 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 blah. And I think they're going to just sort of uh, continue to market to that group and say, hey, you don't want to miss out because you missed out on Bitcoin back in the days. Don't miss out on Web3 and just, yeah. just stick with us, even though it doesn't exist just yet. Just stick with us. You know? I remember talking to the Secret Service uh, once about scams like the, you know, the Nigerian uh, prince scam. And oh, I yeah. said, there mm -hmm. are really no new con games. The Internet has just taken them <laughs> off the street and yeah. put them on the Internet. And this does strike me a little bit as, you know, uh, watch your wallet because, <laughs> oh, this is the hot, new, exciting uh, thing. Um, now it's just watch watch your Bitcoin wallet. Watch your, yeah, well, I wish I could, but uh, <laughs> uh, best place it could be is locked up right now. I'm telling you. Yeah. Best, best thing. You mentioned uh, Moxie uh, Marlin Spike, who uh, has the greatest name in technology, probably not his real name. Uh, stepping down at Signal. I don't know if that's uh, m anything we should draw any conclusion from that. In his post, he said, you know, uh, Signal, which he invented, uh, is 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 growing, is doing well. And uh, every day, he says, I'm struck by how boundless Signal's potential looks. And I want to bring in someone with fresh energy and commitment to make the most of that. That's a normal transition. I don't think there's any mm -hmm. reason to uh, right. think that that means anything for Signal. So yeah, yeah, it was unsustainable. Yeah, he's great, and I, uh, I hope he, I hope he works on something else, new and exciting and different. What did you think about Casey Newton's point about Signal and, and untraceable financial contributions? A, what do you think about that and security and the world? And B, whether did that have anything to do with Moxie's departure? You know, I, I, I that's what kind did. of some people, and even in my mind, I kind of thought, well, because Signal's been getting into crypto. And they want to have transactions over Signal. But most messengers, Facebook Messenger, Apple's Messenger, Android uh, messages, all most messengers have financial transactions. Uh, the difference is Signal is considering adding uh, its own mobile coin, which is, you know, kind of uh, anonymous, you know. And uh, it's built on the Stellar blockchain. It's It's completely fair for Casey to say, you know, Look, we wouldn't ransomware has taken off because of Bitcoin. When yeah. ransomware first started, uh, you had to go to the, they would say go down to the 7-Eleven and buy some yeah. money cards yeah. and mail them to this post office box. It wasn't a very good system and they didn't do very well until Bitcoin became well enough and in fact even then when the first Bitcoin ransomware came along, they had a whole pages of description of how to set up a wallet, put money in the wallet, <laughs> send us the yeah. Bitcoin. Now, though, it's very everybody kind of knows Bitcoin, and so it's really been good for ransomware. So that's, I mean, Casey's point is well taken, but, you know, they've been saying that since PGP came out. I remember Phil Zimmerman, who invented PGP, said, I interviewed him on triangulation. I said, well, what do you say to people that say, you know, terrorists can use encryption? He said, well, <laughs> yes, that's right. But, they can use telephones. Yeah, that's that's life, you, and uh, doesn't mean you shouldn't have something just because it can be misused. It can also have a whispering conversation in the parking lot. Right. That you know, it's like people are going to have private conversations, and and the 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 risk to people who are trying to protect themselves and who aren't doing anything terroristic is much higher than you know. Than the, than the damage done by, you know, terrorists who, who will, th th anyone who's a criminal or, you know, a serious terrorist or whatever, they're going to figure, they're going to know when they're being spied upon for the most part, and they're going to find ways to communicate well, without anybody knowing. And we do this. have a very private uh, form of financial transaction. It's known as cash. 
and uh, <laughs> and it's completely private. If I, you know, give you a, a million dollars in unmarked bills, the problem is because of bank reporting laws, it's getting harder and harder to. It, so government is kind of closing in on that. I think the re primary reason for the crypto existence of cryptos because people want that privacy the cash gives them but it's getting harder and harder financial markets are moving towards credit cards and other easily traceable products uh, bank reporting requirements etc make cash less anonymous but we didn't not use cash because it could potentially allowed for unmarked bills and bags yeah you know? and, and and we have to acknowledge what a great thing credit cards are because if somebody somehow gets a hold of your credentials and they ring up the, you know, they go buy a Ferrari. Um, you don't have to pay for that Ferrari. Right. Right. Cause you're, you're protected through the credit card system and through laws that are associated. But a lot of people credit. say, but I want the privacy. I want to be able to buy stuff without uh, being tracked by Google, you know, and I understand that. But, yeah. but, but, yeah. but uh, get ready, get ready, Ant. get ready. Here it is. There is a touch to push the button. panic to that. <laughs> um, we're here, uh, uh, rather than saying where is the harm or what could go wrong and why don't I want this, it's just Mor privacy Google bad. <laughs> the moral panic button is broke. Oh, oh there From you go. Okay. There. <laughs> All we saw was a black screen. <laughs> Mr. Jammer B was just really quick. <laughs> you need a longer loop if, if we're going to keep this up. <laughs> uh, well, I, I get think really my point is there's downsides to everything. Yeah. Uh, and there's upsides to yeah. everything. And so I don't think you could say, well, Signal doing crypto, oh, bad, because uh, bad guys could use it. Um, I, you know, I don't... Yeah. I mean, cash. Bad guys can use cash. Uh, bad. Let's get rid of cash. Um, he does point out that DM, which is the Facebook-created cryptocurrency, has committed to following anti-money laundering laws. Uh, huh. How? <laughs> well... This is the problem I have. It means you report everything, yeah. right? You report all transactions, and you set up a system where there are no anonymous transactions. Well, I don't know. Facebook if that's what is you're so like. eager to do whatever government would tell them to do to take them off the hook for what they don't do. Uh, yeah, yeah, fa yeah. Facebook is the last person that's going to take a stand on the, you know, yeah. die on that hill. <laughs> no. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, and by the way, this is this is the this is the commitment they made. Uh, in the early development of the Libra network, its members are committed to working with authorities to shape a regulatory environment that encourages technological innovation while maintaining the highest standards of consumer protection. I mean, it's not its not like, okay, here's what we're going to do. Um, and, and they, by the way, they say, as with any currency or financial infrastructure, bad actors will try to exploit the network. When the network is open and accessible to everyone with internet access, the network's main endpoints will need to follow applicable laws and regulations and collaborate with law enforcement. In, in, tra in addition, transactions on the blockchain will be in clear text like many other blockchains, so it's possible for third parties to do analysis to detect and penalize fraud. Again, they're saying, yeah, well, you know, law enforcement comes to us, we'll work with them, and, it, you know... People, Bit, Bitcoin isn't anonymous. You can see every transaction. What's anonymous but, is your wallet number. You know, Facebook says that they'll work with law enforcement, but who's law enforcement? Right. You know, North Korea's, uh, China's, yeah. Russia's. It's uh, the typical bull, pucky, you know, yeah. boilerplate. That It's not easy being Facebook. Yeah, I feel bad for them. Yeah, poor, poor guys. Facebook. Now, uh, the FTC... <laughs> uh, which has been trying to get Facebook to uh, divest WhatsApp and uh, Instagram can go ahead. Uh, U.S. District Judge Jane Boasberg wrote in a, in a, that an amended complaint the agency filed in August offered more robust and detailed evidence to suggest Facebook has an alleged monopoly. Uh, he actually started his, uh, his uh, pleading with second time lucky. <laughs> no, no. Yes. Lucky, lucky is associated with the with the VR product. He had th like yes, Palmer. Palmer Lucky. Uh, he had thrown out the original uh, antitrust complaint, saying you didn't even you, you didn't say they're a monopoly. So apparently, uh, he's this time it's better. And use uh, yeah, you, you use they can use the M word. So uh, there is some thinking that maybe the judge is giving them the green light to try to break up 
uh, or at least force Facebook to divest uh, Instagram and WhatsApp. Um, while the judge's decision, this is from the Washington Post, acknowledges the agency has overcome some of the shortcomings of the initial suit, Judge Boasberg signaled it may be challenging for the FTC to ultimately prove Facebook is a monopoly. <laughs> Quote, it's anyone's guess whether the agency will prevail. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Although the, though the agency, this is a quote, may well face a tall task down the road in proving its allegations, the court believes it at least now has cleared the pleading bar and may proceed to discovery. So I'm sure Facebook is not thrilled about this. You know, ironically, it feels to me in Europe that Facebook is an absolute and total monopoly, less so in the U.S. Everyone I know in Europe, all my European friends, literally use Instagram, Facebook, and WhatsApp and nothing else, unless they own a business, in which case they might have a website. But beyond that, a huge number of people in, in Europe and probably elsewhere in the world use only Facebook products to use the internet. It's astonishing how... I had universal. to install, when we got to Oaxaca, I had to install WhatsApp so I could text you and Amira. <laughs> yes, that's right. Well, so you could text Amira. Amira, use, yeah, yeah. I don't use WhatsApp. Yeah, so. she's the only person in my WhatsApp phone book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, it, clearly, the, certainly WhatsApp has a monopoly in many nations worldwide. Yes. Not so yep. much in the U.S., uh, Insta and, you know, I think in, I don't know if Facebook has a, a monopoly or in the U.S. I don't know what the competition is for Facebook. That's part of the problem. Is Twitter competition? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, what's the competition yeah. for Facebook? But I think uh, I talk to people all the time and they even say it in an apologetic tone and say, well, I, I do have a Facebook account. Yeah. And I that's say, don't that apologize. That's how you keep though. up with your... That's how you keep up yeah, with your family. And, and, and that alone is not a monopoly. It's 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 right. one of many, many things we use. It, it, it's it's and it Well, that's the, the question. What's the tricky. competition for Facebook? Is it uh, a, a postal letter? Is it... I mean, that's the question. Right. A monopoly in a what realm? Yeah, is a phone call right. competition? What In what realm? There isn't anything else like Facebook. Yeah, not yet. LinkedIn? No. Nope. Uh, Friendster's gone. Friend feed's gone. MySpace wait, wait, is around, but it's not a competition. Wait, but but you mentioned Friendster. Wasn't Friendster purchased by Facebook and then killed? Yeah. Okay. Well, well that's why it's gone. <laughs> but yeah. Well, no, it was already. Right. <laughs> it wasn't doing that. It was. It was a little peaked already. Yeah. Uh, MySpace I think it's, though it's is a Neil still Dash around. That imagine though, if 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 Friendster had won, or Friend yeah. had won. Friend feed was great. I really liked Friend. Yeah, Friend feed was great. Yeah. yeah. That was the Google Plus before Google Plus. Um, but no, I don't, don't think make, don't make Mike sad. I know. I <laughs> brought it up. It is. You know what? God damn Google. I'm sorry. I apologize <laughs> to all the Christians out there. But I do want God to actually damn Google. I, uh, I, I, apparently, they already have. You know? <laughs> but honestly, what haven't they destroyed? Look at the messaging mess. And then they and now Hiroshi Lockheimer has a temerity. We still have Gmail. We still have Gmail. We still have Gmail. We still That's have a, Gmail. Yeah. yeah. Um, and search. <laughs> and search well, still works. But there, boy, there have been reports that YouTube. search isn't all that good anymore either. I but just saw the, that. Yeah, I haven't. I don't yeah. know if I agree with that. But, but, but back to the messaging thing. Um, yeah, that was a... So uh, uh, Ron... Ron uh, Amadio, Amadio in the Ars Technica, yeah. Wrote a... Th it's one of those things where it's like, why didn't I write that? It was, it was a so great good. piece. Oh, yeah. so, so good. But he basically points out, first he lays out the case about how Google is complaining that iMessage is too powerful, that they use bullying. They actually, <laughs> Google accused Apple of bullying by, by making people who use Android devices green instead of blue. How having, dare they? Well, this yes. is taking off on the Wall Street Journal article, which yeah. because there was nothing else to write about, the journal suddenly discovered that people who are using Android Messenger uh, right. Feel left out of Apple yeah. Messages conversations, <laughs> but but after but after laying out the case that Google is making against Apple, Ron just eviscerates them by pointing out that since um, Apple launched iMessage in 2011, same year they launched Google Plus, by the way, Google launched Google Plus. Google has launched 13 <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> messaging product. I think we've used them time. all. Jeez. And the only person today, I ever talked on Allo with was you, Jeff Jarvis. <laughs> yeah, I know. And that's you're the only person I ever talked to. <laughs> Remember somewhere, Allo? somewhere out in the cloud is our conversation. Allo. Says, oh, this is dumb. Yeah, I think it's pretty dumb. Ron's headline. After ruining Android messaging, Google says iMessage is too powerful. Please stop kicking our butts so badly. Google failed to compete with iMessage for years, and now it wants Apple to play nice. How many? 13, Mike? Wow. 13 that, that they've launched in total. They've killed a bunch of them, obviously, because it's Google. But now, even today, they have eight, and they're even incompatible with each other. Jeez. So today, they have eight messaging solutions. But imagine, theater of the mind, imagine, if you will, ladies and gentlemen, if after seeing Apple launch iMessage in 2011, Google launched uh, um, you know, Google messages uh, in 2000, let's call it 2012, and said, this is the only messaging platform we will ever support. It's on we'll cross-platform it. on everything. It supports all the bells and whistles. You can make phone calls. You can do this. You can do that. You can have it on an iPhone. You can have it on an Android phone. They would completely dominate this space if they had done that, right? Because because iMessage has always been primarily for Apple users. Yes. All right. They could, they could have, have made it cross-platform. They could, they could have, have had the WhatsApp. Yeah. It would have been like WhatsApp. Yeah. And but no, they they are so disorganized and visionless uh that they just couldn't do that. So Ron also points out because what is this, we've talked about this that Google's saying, well, everybody should just use RCS. If Apple would only add RCS to I iMessages, we'd be happy. Right. He says even if Google could magically roll out RCS, rich community, rich communication messaging standard rich communication standard it's a poor standard to build a messaging platform on because it's dependent on a carrier phone carriers bill. right it's anti-internet it can't natively work on web pages pcs smart watches and tablets because those things don't have sim cards they don't have phone numbers the carriers designed rcs so rcs puts your carrier bill at the center of your online identity even when free identification methods like email exist and work on more devices google is just promoting carrier lock-in as a solution to Apple lock-in. And unfortunately, mm. I have to agree with him on that. Mm. Yeah, but the, the solution, as I intimated a minute ago, is for them to have the have an alternative that isn't lock-in. Right. You know, to have something like WhatsApp, but from Google. They could have put it everywhere. The this yeah, is exactly. what they did with Chrome. Chrome has been yep. hugely successful. Yes, yes, yes. Just make yep. it free, make it available. Google benefits because people use it. And uh, just have one. See earlier discussion of WordPress. Just have one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Google is only to, only Google. Hangouts would have worked. They were. They, right. Uh, well, Ron Amadio points out that, that Hangouts is the best thing, that best messaging solution that, that Google ever came out with. And, and they, they killed it. it. Yeah. Yeah. It was solid. So, it wasn't yeah. perfect, but it, it was definitely. Well, the reason messages works. One of the reasons messages works, besides the fact that it's the default messaging app on every iPhone sold and you can't turn it off. The other reason is it de it degrades properly. So it uses the internet for data like WhatsApp, but it will also use SMS. And so you can you can have some assurance that you can iMessage everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it has desktop, it works. It's it's a very Apple-y thing because you can't use it anywhere else. And and it's it's actually very secure. And it's secure. It, Apple knows what you're doing, but other than that, it's secure. Well, I don't. Th I don't think even Apple. Well, I mean, theoretically, they could find out what you're doing, but it's like it's it's heavily encrypted, so yeah. no third party is gonna. It's a it's a hell of a lot it. better than most stuff. Yeah. If, if and Google, I used Hangouts for a long time because uh, it worked on my iPhone, it worked on my Android phone, it worked on my desktop. Mm -hmm. Android yeah. messages will kind of do all of that. I have it on all those yeah. places, but it's not as good as Hangouts. Yeah, Hangouts was definitely the solution for our family. Yeah, because we could use it everywhere. So no, no, well, you can't bitch Google. What was their rationale for screwing it up? What, can you imagine what went through their heads? Ron wrote a long, or somebody did, ours had a long, a 25,000 word history, yet was Ron, history of yeah. Google's messaging. And, and, and I, I did that once too. I wrote, I wrote something like that for Computer World, and by the time it was published, it already was out of date because they changed yet another thing. <laughs> So I'm not, I'm not even going to touch it anymore. Uh, so it's fun. If you go through all the different apps, Google Talk, Google Voice, Google Wave, Google Buzz, Slides Disco, 
What? The Google Plus. I don't know what that, that is. I don't know. It's in the article. The Google Plus era, Google Plus Hangouts video chat, the first Hangouts, Google Plus Huddle Messenger. Uh, oh. Huddle. Oh, God. Do we remember that? Yeah, now it's a Microsoft. Yeah, I remember, that. Yeah. I remember Huddle. Yeah. Uh, uh, Google Docs Editor Chat, Google Hangouts, Google Spaces, Google Allo 2016, Google's Dead on Arrival WhatsApp clone, Google Duo, which I still use with my daughter for video calls, Google Hangouts yep. still Meet, Google. they renamed it Meet, YouTube Messages, Google Hangouts Chat, <laughs> they renamed it Chat, Google Did Maps you just Messages. Say YouTube Messages? Oh, wow. Yeah, in, 19, in 2017, he actually says, no, yes, this really no was sense. a thing. Yeah. No Google sense. and RCS, Google Photos Messages, Google Stadia Messages, Google Pay Messages, <laughs> Google Assistant <laughs> Messages, Google Phone Messaging, Google Chat Part 2. And then the last bit, is anyone in charge at Google? <laughs> and the answer is no. And to answer your question, um, uh, the, the elevator pitch for, or the, the short version of the answer is that just like Microsoft used to do under Balmer, each division has its own messaging app right. and they don't talk to each other and they're competing with each other. And 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 there's nobody in charge. There's no Steve Jobs. There's no uh, uh, Satya Nadella even uh, to say, no, this is the one we're doing. That's it. Period. Everybody, we're putting all the wood behind this particular arrow. Nobody ever did that. Uh, I've been maintaining for several years that Sundar Pichai is a horrible CEO. Nobody ever hmm. says that. But look at the result of what's happened since he took over. It's been a it's all this stuff, the closures, the failures, the, the this kind of thing. It's this is all getting worse and worse under Sundar Pichai's leadership. Remember that great cartoon? I agree with you. It was making fun of Microsoft where all the divisions are shooting at each other. Yes. Uh, I have the original yeah. on my wall at home, actually. The uh, yep. artist sent it to me. Um Apparently, Google decided that was a good way to do business, and they adopted the Microsoft method. Meanwhile, Microsoft had the good sense to stop doing that and to kind of at least try to unify themselves. Um, it's, I mean, it's sad. For a long time, this, yes. this, this, this spaghetti, throw it against the wall and see what sticks approach was great for Google. They, they got some major hits. Gmail was a 20% project by one engineer initially. The idea of having advertising was just some engineer had to talk Larry and Sergey into doing ads and they were like, they were against it. And they're like, no, no, we should do ads. And so it, for a long time, most of the things that were best about Google were the result of this kind of like every engineer kind of like spinning up their own thing and then we'll try it and see what happens. But Google grew so big and so and they became so successful that they could no longer be that kind of a startup like company. And so now you have people betting their businesses on their infrastructure. You have all kinds of, uh, you know, billions of people using their products. And so you can't have that sort of scrappy startup, let's try it and see if it works kind of mentality. You have to have a vision about what you're going to do, and then you have to execute on that vision. And they just can't seem to do it. This is uh, Manu Cornet's treatment. This is Manu Cornet's uh, organizational trees for all the different yeah. companies. Here's Microsoft, where they're all shooting at each other. Actually, <laughs> Google's is still, I think, fairly accurate. Although this, you is, know what? That looks like their new building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everybody reports to everybody else. Amazon's very hierarchical. I think it still and is. That looks like Amazon's uh, atrium. The, it the, is. The it's That's the right. downtown right. Seattle atrium. Facebook looks like a giant bean bag. I know every, everybody's yeah. connected. Apple, all this is from the era, Steve Jobs era, centralized point, although I think it's probably still the same. Mm -hmm. And then Oracle is like a giant legal division. <laughs> a, little, a, little, a little engineering division. Uh, Manu, you got it. You still, and I'm very proud to have this on my wall. By the way, Satya Nadella, I didn't realize this, in his book, Hit Refresh, in the first page, mentions this cartoon. And really? says, this was the thing I was trying to solve. So wow. Google apparently did not get that message. Where did that cartoon originally run? Just on a site? Or uh, yeah, Manu uh, published it on, it's gone now, unfortunately, on Bonkers World. But it's oh. uh, it's no longer there. But I am very proud to have a original uh, version of it from Manu sent us. Uh, because we talked about it all the time. You're going to make it an NFT? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Now you're talking. <laughs> All right, let me take a little break. Uh, we hope Stacy's feeling a little bit better. She's under the weather, yeah. but we're thrilled we got Mike Elgin 
in. It's great to, to have you. I'm glad to be here. Uh, from mikeelgin.substack.com. And, of course, don't forget gastronomad.net. The uh, Morocco tour is sold out, but uh, there are more to come if you go to gastronomad.net and click the Experiences tab. Yeah, our our, our next one after that is Prosecco, which is going to be <sighs> nice. really great. Nice. And, I, of course, I was on the Oaxaca trip and highly recommend it. Morocco's a longer one, isn't it? Two weeks, two yeah. full weeks, and we go to, I think, something like uh, eight or nine, ten cities. Is there still so, room in the spring trip? Uh, the spring trip, no, that's no. that's okay. sold out. Uh, but there is in October. Twenty twenty two is all sold out, but twenty twenty three is already okay. getting people. Nice, so, very nice. Well. Yeah. A lot of a uh, lot of twit listeners <laughs> on those trips, so uh, you'll be amongst good people. I must say, so much fun. Uh, we're going to get you on. I think next month, uh, you and Amira on to yes. uh, the club February eleventh to talk about it. So that'll yeah. be our Valentine's Looking forward Day to that. episode. Yeah. Uh, also, Jeff Jarvis from uh, the City University. My, my gastronomical experience right here. <laughs> I've been waiting for you to take a break so I can get a snack. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Mr. Ant Pruitt, <laughs> hands-on photography, who did not go to CES, and that's my fault. I and hope I'm still healthy. Are you okay that you didn't get to go? I'm totally fine, okay. sir. Yeah, totally I, fine. it would have been fun. Uh, Father Robert was there a quarter of the normal attendance, about 40,000 people. So it sounds like it was pretty empty. There were some cool things, but I feel like it's a very gimmicky show. And I don't know how much stuff really... Well, everything I love is one, one vendor put up just plywood or, 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 or two by fours and plywood and QR codes and no hardware. <laughs> You know, the only advantage I would have seen wow. at CES this year is it would have been a little bit more intimate for us when you would have been to the booths. Yeah, because very cause intimate. Not as many people yes. there. Is <laughs> a lot of times they are they are literally trying to flush you through so they can get the next press person there. But this would have been nicer to sit down and, and spend a little more time. But it's all good. We we still got the gist of it. There, uh, a lot of these uh, companies just did. Uh, you know, Zoom conferences and virtual conferences. Mari Barra from GM didn't go, but she gave her keynote via Zoom, things like that. Samsung had scheduled an event uh, yesterday. The uh, Exynos 2200 was supposed to be launched yesterday. They didn't tell anybody. They didn't show up. They didn't do anything. It was like dial tone. It was like the Golden Globes. Wow. Yeah, that was weird. I told my wife, we're watching the football game. I said, oh, shoot, it's the Golden Globes are tonight. This, no, but you can't watch it. They just All it was was a, a few members of the uh, Hollywood Foreign Press Association tweeting. So they tweet, Here, here's the winner. For this. <laughs> they held it on Twitter. That's all it was ever worth. They held it on ever. Twitter. Um, so Samsung finally did tell uh, uh, Business Korea that they are planning to unveil the new processor when they launch the new phone. There are no problems. <laughs> <laughs> that is all. <laughs> that's, that's how you do a press release. That right is there. all. Yeah. <laughs> nothing more. There's nothing to see here. Move along. Um, yeah, I was. I, so I'm looking at Twitter, watching the Golden Globes, thinking, oh, I wonder if Tina Fey and Amy Poehler will host it again this year. <laughs> Maybe they got Ricky Gervais. No, it's just 87 old white men tweeting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, th that was part of the problem. You know, they, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord! Completely out of touch with the zeitgeist, yeah. and really should never have had the prestige no. that they had. I mean, it was just a you know, it was a hundred. The the journal, the foreign journalists that made up the Foreign Press Association were barely even bloggers. These are people from third rate, two bit little regional yeah. newspapers who freelance from, a little bit here and there for some, it. the daily disgrace of yeah. they Morocco. It. Yeah. And, so I just yeah. want, I just wish though, it was a great uh, car wreck of a of a TV show. Because everybody because gets of the alcohol. sloshed, and they and they would hire people like Ricky Gervais who would just insult them right and left. Right, oh, yeah. It was fun. So yep. just do that. Admit we're out of touch. We don't know what the hell we're talking about. We're just going to give this some awards. Meaningless. Come watch okay. our party. It was a it was a good party. I feel bad. I think I guess it's over, right? I mean, you, how do you come back from? Yeah, I think I think it's definitely over. And yeah. what's funny about Ricky Gervais is that he did some bits. Some of his best bits 
uh, in hindsight, when you when you sh- when you look through and find out what actually happened to them, are just accurate depictions. Uh, yes, he was, yeah. he's telling the yeah. truth. He, he had this one joke. He said, "Oh, there there aren't any uh, nominee any black nominees because the Hollywood Foreign Press." are very, very racist. Well, <laughs> that was hilarious until it turns out that's just true. a plain statement of fact. true. <laughs> he didn't care. <laughs> oh, God. Facts. Facts. Uh, another casualty of COVID, I guess, you know. See, well, see, you think CES will be back well, next year? Oh, no. Which, the, 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 the Foreign Press Association? No, that was a casualty of scandal. Scandal? Was there actual scandal or just people oh, yeah. realized they were... There actual was, scandal. There was actual yeah. scandal. Oh, okay. There are multiple cases where... Bri- where bribery, people perhaps? People bribed them. Yeah. Uh, it started with Pia Zadora. Remember that in the, oh, yeah, the 80s? That's right. She was best so her husband, Her husband yeah. like took yeah. the entire foreign press to Vegas and wined them and dined them, and she won Best Actress or something yeah. for a horrible performance. <laughs> And that was the first one, but there's been several since then that were But we like knew that. about that. That was decades ago. Right. We didn't exactly. care because it was just a... Uh, Status quo. It was a, That wasn't exactly the word I was going to use. It did begin with S. <laughs> well, the, 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 the racism bit is the thing that did them in. And yeah. I don't know, it didn't get a lot of press, but Tom Cruise actually returned his three Golden Globes oh, really? to the organization. Oh. said, I don't want him anymore. Oh, it was Cruise. Why was I thinking it was Tom Hanks? It was Cruise. That uh, don't quote me. I think it was Cruz. Maybe it was Hanks, but I think it was the kind of thing Hanks would have done. I can't see Tom Cruise really caring, but okay. Yeah, I, I thought it was Tom yeah. Hanks that did that. <laughs> okay, I thought that was interesting. Um, Somebody named Tom. Let's yeah. let's be Tom. frank. <laughs> I don't think the uh, Academy Awards are much are much better, are they? I mean, there's no evidence of bribery. Tom but- Cruise. Yeah. Well, there, there's less well, evidence. All, of all these award shows are they're all BS. Yes, they're meaningless. It's a, but it's a party. It's I a like watching marketing. people. I like watching celebrities get drunk. Well, but but <laughs> actually entertaining. They, yeah, I, I I I'm shocked that I'm going to be defending the Oscars. But but they they actually have thousands of members. They tend they're, to be they're many in of the their trades. Like yeah, yeah. Super luminaries. If you want an Oscar before you probably a member. Yeah. Steven Spielberg, uh, all, all these people. But when they they had their own race scandal two or three years ago, if you recall, and they responded by increasing the membership by like yeah twenty five percent. Plus, it's almost entirely people of color, so they they good. actually put their money where their mouth is. And the is. voters are yeah. in the field uh, that they're voting for, except for the yeah. big awards. So right. social right. media made a huge difference. Hashtag Oscars so white, yeah, so white, yeah. Yeah. so white, yes. So yes. White. It yeah. was, by the way, Tom Cruise. Credit to Tom Cruise. Yes, ah, it was. He yes. returned his All awards, right. and NBC dropped the ceremony. I should have. I missed this article last year. Uh, that's why I wasn't on TV. NBC said it wants meaningful reform. Good for them. <laughs> uh, this is a defining moment for Hollywood. Says Time's Up. Uh, I just right. think they should all be just deported, and that'd be the end. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> As long as everybody understands what a what a crappy sh- thing it is, yeah, we can still enjoy it. Yeah, it's they should reality. rename it to be the Trash Oscars or something. Yeah, like the Trash that. Oscars. Exactly. Yeah. Don't you know? I'm not. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe maybe it does carry. It unfortunately carried a lot of weight. It was kind of the precursor of the Oscars, and right. Yeah. So that that's that is unfortunate, I guess. But I did like watching it fall apart. In, on live TV, Ricky, Ricky, Ricky Gervais, Ricky Gervais. was cold. Tina, on Tina Fey, and Amy Poehler. God, it was funny. What is what is streak, sir? Oh, thank you for uh, bringing that up because it is time to mention our sponsor. Thank you. <laughs> very, very well done. You protect the boss from himself, Ant. What is, very what is this streak I keep hearing about? He says, what is streak? "If you use Gmail, you know it's a gold mine. It's a database of." So much valuable information. Streak is our sponsor and runs, I guess you would call it a CRM, a customer relationship management engine that rides right on top of Gmail. In fact, it's directly inside Gmail. You're in, I mean, the thing that Gmail did so well, so right, is that don't delete your mail because everything in there is a value. It's kind of a database, a history. It, it tracks what you've been up to, sales and fundraising and hiring or support. Streak optimizes this in an incredible way. It kind of turns it almost into a spreadsheet of information. You can use Streak's free email tools to check if your emails have been opened, 
to send bulk emails with automated follow-up emails to improve your response rates. Uh, it's part of your everyday workflow. You're already using Gmail, right? But you can then inside Gmail see details about your leads, your customers, your investors. No more switching between Gmail and other tools. If you're prospecting for new customers or raising a fundraising round or growing your team or managing support tickets, Streaks Pipelines, which are very cool, by the way, you, you can use them to track all your processes directly from Gmail. You can set up a pipeline in a couple of minutes. It's very easy to get started. Customize the pipelines based on your needs. This is, I think, a very cool way of thinking about mail, the process of mail. Streak makes it easy to collaborate by automatically sharing emails and notes with everyone and anyone on your team. Google Technology Partner of the Year. So Google loves them too. It's used by thousands of founders, entrepreneurs, and small business owners, 750,000 to be exact. In fact, all you have to do is uh, ask around, and it won't take long before the conversation goes to Streak. People who use Streak, just they have to tell the world, oh, you, oh, you, have, you, have you seen this? Have you tried it? It's amazing. You can try it today. Right now, it's free to use on your own. Uh, that's to get you in the door. If you want to use it with your, uh, your business, with your team, there's a pro plan. In fact, you'll get 20% off your first year of their pro plan, their most popular option. 20% off their first year by going to streak.com slash twig. S-T-R-E-A-K. Streak.com slash twig. So, and I want you to use that so they know you saw it here because I want them to stick around. Streak.com slash twig. And you get a big 20% off for your whole first year. But as I said, the free plan you can use on your own if you want to dip your toe in. Streak's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Streak.com slash twig. We thank them so much for their support of this week in Google. Ooh. Google. Um, <laughs> did you put this in here? The cats that are sleeping on the yeah. Starlink dishes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So and a good headline too. Yeah. Cat on a hot satellite dish the uh they're they're heated so that they don't get iced up and uh apparently the cats figured that out <laughs> and the other problem is it's kind of hard for starlink to work through a cat uh one customer well i'll cats give you get their revenge yeah they, here's a here's a uh five cats <laughs> <laughs> this is a tweet from Aaron Taylor. <laughs> Five cats who have discovered the warmth in they're in the snow. Uh, and they're all bun I wouldn't have thought you could get five cats on that dish, but uh, apparently, apparently can. And, and, and the great thing is cats always have that you got a problem with this look? Yeah. Like, What's of course we're here. Yeah. They're cats are funny, aren't they? They they know they're doing something wrong, but unlike a dog, which will run off, a cat just looks at you going, <laughs> What? You. Right. I dare you to challenge <laughs> what? <laughs> What's your problem? <laughs> That's hysterical. Uh, why did why is Zynga worth twelve point seven billion dollars? Fake hay. Fake hay. Is, do they has still do Farmville? It's the NFT of the day. I did Farmville Just for try to years. Try get that fake hay. <laughs> Far Farmville three for mobile is coming. I hear. Oh, that's why. All right. Um, the original farm bill, which died in 2020, has been replaced by uh, games. They've acquired quite a few. Graham Games, Small Giant Games, Peak Games, Rollick, Ektra. They're really the masters of the free-to-play, the freemium game, where you get people hooked, and then, uh, and then they, uh, they give you lots of money for <laughs> fake donuts or, or things. So Take Two, which publishes Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption and Bioshock and Borderlands Civilization, really big Kerbal Space Program, all the 2K sports games. They're a big gaming company. Just bought Zynga. A name, it feels like a blast from the past. Yeah. yeah. $12.7 billion. <sighs> which means right. probably you'll see Grand Theft Auto uh, mobile, right? Why not? Yeah, there's the horsepower for it. Yeah, all these devices yeah. now, and that's you'll all be able to mow do down anyway. farm animals or something. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's funny. I thought Zynga. I honestly, Zynga was in the old Tech TV building, and I thought oh, they got to be gone by now. What What are they doing? 
Yeah. Uh, so last week we mentioned that Norton 360, mm -hmm. the the antivirus program, was in, installing a crypto miner. Mm -hmm. You, I think I don't think by default. I think you a you had to have the right hardware, and b I think you had to opt in on people's I computers. Thought it didn't, I thought it installed it, but you did have to opt in to run it. That was Maybe that's it. And they take 15% of it, as Corey Doctorow pointed out. Yes. Now it turns out they're not alone. Avira, which was purchased by Norton, is now doing it to Avira has a big half billion users. It was a free antivirus, very popular for a long time. They have, they have now introduced something called Avira Crypto. To, this almost would feel like the opposite of an antivirus. <laughs> wow. Um, but uh, I, I guess, I mean, it's, it's, uh, to me, it's already a problem with Norton slowing your system down. Right. To like molasses, but to add a crypto miner... Not again, to mention the energy the question, waste and... I, 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 again, I question why are we still pushing antiviruses when Windows already has something pretty good yeah, I don't think built we, in? Yeah. Why are we still pushing these things? Because they're money. <laughs> There's money in them there hills, I guess. You are Mr. Leo Laporte. Can you tell people to just use Windows? I do all the time. On the radio show, people ask me, should I get an antivirus? And I say no. Steve Gibson says yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Uh, there are reasons you might want an antivirus in business. A lot of it, we have we run antivirus here. Russell, okay. All right. Russell yeah. has us run into an antivirus because, um, well, we're a business, and the last thing we want to do is get shut down by ransomware. Right. If you've got a teenager, you might want to consider it. Uh, if the hardheads use the family computer, because they're no, I mean, when Michael, as you know, I have the solution to it all. What's that? A Chromebook. Oh, that's it, did you keep know, your Acer? Paperweight. What is that? What, what one is that? No, this is this is the Google one. You went back to the Google one. Went, yeah, yeah. That's the which is that the Go the one with the go. nubby bot go. butt? Yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> nubby, the, the nubby, nubby butt. butt nubby butt one. <laughs> and I still I still use the Pixel the Pixel Book the 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 pre Go one and I. I share your smugness, Jeff. It's I, I just feel <laughs> that that I'm in a smug. VPN, I'm right. Like, come at me, man. Like, what are you gonna do? Yeah, it's true. It's like it's the same reason I hate Wordle. Yeah. It makes sense. That Wordle works on Chromebooks. Well, I will never know that. Why do you hate Wordle? Never. I hate being spammed by all these people telling me, look, I can spell. Oh, you don't hate Wordle. You hate Twitter. <laughs> See, this is the problem. <laughs> this is the problem. He will defend to the death Twitter. But this is really a Twitter problem, not a Wordle problem. No, it's the problem of Wordle sets up this function so that everybody shares it. Like, I should give a good rat's rump. <laughs> Like what, everything what words else you got or how many you do? Look, I, could I do Wordle every, every day. I don't share it on my Twitter. I, must April, be the people oh, you're following. So people I do. Yeah, I have jerks friends. Too. <laughs> everything on the web is shareable, sir. Everybody oh. on their web page has that little icon that says click here to share to Facebook or to Twitter or what have you. So Yeah, but it's a news story, Wordle. fine, but it's your it's your <laughs> stinky little word game. Well, look, this is another way to share it. Here's somebody who's cross stitching. Her Wordle scores. Oy, oy. <laughs> wow. Look, she got that word in two notes. That's hard to do. I think that's luck if you get it in two words. I really do. I think that's Mr. Luck. Jarvis, do you think I play Wordle? No. Well, actually, I have, but <gasps> no, because I didn't share. <laughs> yeah, I don't share it. I, I'm pretty you proud of my Wordle score. You don't but share. I don't share it. <laughs> I don't Whereas share. I don't play I, it, I, and I, I share really played it maybe play four it, times. So. <laughs> All bad. I never remember to play it. I, I got other stuff going on in my brain. Yeah, that's the thing. I've got a more well, life. You know, just it's fine. You want to do it? You want to have orange juice and breakfast? You don't have to tell me every day. It's like <laughs> the old days of people. People tell me, "Oh, bloggers just say what they have for breakfast." Well, now everybody on Twitter just says, "Oh, I just played Wordle." <laughs> <laughs> it's you know, weird because it's all going to be replaced by an algorithm. Artificial intelligence is smarter than all of you. It can it's on GitHub now. It can get the words faster. Everybody's going to cheat. It's over. Uh, yeah. Wordle is already over. Yeah, yeah. Take my word for it. What will we be Take talking my about word Wordle it. next month? Uh, well, like as in, everybody remember Wordle? All right. Wordle's actually I'm been just around how long it'll last. Months. These because these fads they they it's they a come fad. and go so yeah. quickly. Yeah. They do. They yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. I'm I mean, an angry bird. I, I get up. 
I get up at four o'clock in the morning and I start reading and writing basically and thinking and thinking a lot wow. about words Jesus, all the time. Right. <laughs> and so I, yeah, I, I those cows, you know, those cows those too? Blog yeah. cows gotta be milked. <laughs> But I, well, actually, actually, as you know, Leo, I lived on a farm for the second year I worked at, at Twit and sometimes uh, uh, he had a farm. The farmers went on vacation and I literally got up at four o'clock in the morning to milk the cow, to feed the pigs before coming in and doing uh, TNT. So oh, wow. that that actually happened. But uh, <laughs> um, don't recommend it. But um, <laughs> no, I, I, I checked out Wordle today. I figured, well, it must be fun. Everybody's talking about it. I went there. And I'm like. I don't want to have to struggle with more words. I do this from first thing in the morning to yeah. dinner time. Yeah. yeah. What's the right word? <laughs> That's what I do all day, every day. It's like yeah. enough already. So That's a good question. Me. How many writers actually use, uh, actually play? I Wordle? use Wordle because I do a lot of uh, coding exercises. So I don't want my brain develop too big on one side <laughs> oh, i want it to the, okay. the other i'm trying the to keep my side. lobes e even you do it for vanity yes <laughs> i don't want to have a big bulge on one side on the right side but i should have some on the left side so that's why i do wordle i crossword puzzles too i try to balance uh language and math Apparently, I started playing at some point earlier today. Oh, there you totally go. forgot about it. There you go. You didn't even that, finish. You just got two right, words see, that, that just shows you how much I really care. Yeah. So will the Sonos be, will the Google devices be banned because of Sonos' victory in the uh, international well, trade war? They're just taking away things, right? Yeah, well, Google's solution to this is to take away features. So the final U.S. ITC ruling last week, Google infringed on the Sonos patents, but the ban will not, they probably will not ban them uh, because Google has gone into crisis mode and strips, stripping away features from their, uh, their devices. You can't set the volume now, for instance, remotely through a device. On, on multiple ones, right? On multiple like devices, yeah. Which makes me mad because I don't want to use a Sonos. And the whole reason I was excited is I had the same. I guess that's the point of the patent. <laughs> so I yeah, had the same capability. Is that a patent, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's Our the expert point. witness, uh, Mr. Lepore. Oops. <laughs> I just. Little, little fuel in the fire there. Why can't they just pay Sonos? For the well, that's my question because Apple has many of the same features. Apple must be yeah. licensing it. Some type of license yeah. fee, right? Yeah, I guess that Google doesn't want to do that. I don't know. It would uh, set a precedent. I don't know. An open letter from the CEO of YouTube to the world's fact checkers. I'm guessing you put this in, Jeff. No, Jarvis. two. I didn't, and it's an open letter to two YouTubes from the world's yeah, fact. Yeah, now checkers. you see why I didn't put it up. Because oh no, we're gonna moral panic. That's fine. Dear Ms. Susan Wojcicki. So what are they? They're worried that YouTube is promoting misinformation. Yeah. 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 Yes. Is there an organization of the fact checkers of America? Oh, or it's a fun. You, you can imagine what a fun convention <laughs> that is. Yes, there is. <laughs> I don't think you had a ham sandwich for lunch. Is that a ham sandwich? I don't think there's any ham in that ham sandwich. <laughs> you probably have lunch. Look at all these organizations. Yeah. Africa Check, Animal Politico. Aus Fatos, very good. Bolivia Verifica, Boom, Check Your Fact USA. What, there's all of these uh, checking organizations. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're big ones. The corrective. Polish Demagogue Association. <laughs> <laughs> fact Check Ghana. Uh, we have quite a few in the U.S. because we got a lot of fake facts in the yeah, U.S. Yeah, we do. Um, My Go Pen, Taiwan. All right. Pravda <laughs> in Poland. <laughs> I don't think it's the same Pravda. I doubt it. The Healthy Indian Project, FIP. There's Pravda. So I, so Trump's new social work is uh, a social network is called Truth Social. Would that be translated as Pravda? I guess it would. Oh. That's the word Pravda in Russian is truth. Have I shown you the picture of five cats on a on a dish? <laughs> Have I shown you? I'll be here all week. <laughs> Dishy McDish face. That's the name. The official name. Uh, perfect. 
Perfect much. antenna. <laughs> Perfect antenna. Jammer B. Did we do the worst of CES last week? I think we did. I don't think, no, we did another show. Oh, okay. I, can, no, I, good, I do so many shows. Old. This is actually you know, good. Last week we were talking with uh, Miss, Miss Geller, right? Yeah, yeah, Kathy was great. Yeah. By yeah. the way, was, yeah, you're welcome. What a great, Thank you. great yeah. Yeah. Uh, addition. Yeah. And, and now I feel like ancillary copyright has become part of the English language, which is... <laughs> <laughs> Repeat after me. Leistungsschutzrecht. <laughs> Holy cow. I'm not doing that. I'm not repeating that. <laughs> we spent half an hour on ancillary copyright, Mike. Leo, Leo's sitting there thinking, how do I break into this? How? How? No, how? I, I, I literally am sitting know? here thinking, I don't want to break into it. It's a very good conversation. It was a good But I also yeah. can feel people turning the... I, this is yeah, from my radio yeah. days. Turning off oh, yeah. the radio. Uh, <laughs> click, yeah, well, click, click. it was only 15 minutes for me, Leo, because I was listening at double speed. There so. you go. Then it was faster oh, that way. So course. that's a good way to do it. Uh, the worst of CES, this is uh, six right-to-repair advocates who assembled last Friday to present Repair.org's second annual Worst in Show Awards, a selection of the least private, least secure, least repairable, and least sustainable gadgets at CES. Um, Corey Doctorow uh, was the host, perfectly appropriate. Yep. <laughs> uh, he says, it's our job here today to talk about the hidden or maybe not so hidden and completely foreseeable failure modes of these gadgets. Uh, award from the founder of iFixit, Kyle Weens, good friend of the network. He gave the Mercedes EQS electric vehicle the award for worst product. This is amazing. <laughs> because you're not supposed to open the hood. Uh, when you when you uh, actually turn on the car, Here's the no this shows up. Kyle posted this on Twitter. Notes on the hood. Only the specialist personnel of a qualified specialist workshop should open the hood. Access wow. by the customer is not permitted. Not permitted. Not in your permitted own car. to open the hood. Consult a qualified specialist workshop. The reason they give, and I think this is not unfair, is an electric vehicle, and there may be, you may get a shock. You could shock yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a reason to buy the car. Yeah. But I have to say, uh, the only real car mishap I ever had was when my car had overheated in the desert when I was a kid driving across country to go to uh, college. And yeah. I, I, f I don't know why, I decided to open the radiator cap. Oh, oh. <laughs> that was oh. a mistake. Ooh. Oh. What came out? Steaming hot water and a gusher. Ooh. I managed to dodge it. I didn't get burnt, but... Uh, wow. That's an example of why you don't want to open the hood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but you did have the right. To I had the right to do it. I had the right to hurt myself. Yeah. Didn't Rolls Royce used to lock the hood and only to be opened by a qualified Maybe. Rolls Royce? Person? But if you're roll, if you're buying a Rolls Royce, do you think you're really going to go check the oil yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. You got, you got Dijon mustard on your hands. It's not Pardon me. <laughs> do you have a dipstick I could borrow? Um. So. It turns Being out dipsticks. I didn't know. Was yes. it, it was it Mercedes that piece? Yeah, that they got rid of the dipstick. That's another thing. Yeah. Uh, this is not the first time Mercedes has gone in this road. Weens noted a few years ago the company removed the dipstick from its C-class vehicles, arguing that only an authorized technician should change the oil. It's the That's automotive crazy. equivalent of an audio jack. Mm, yes, audio port. Yes, maybe no dipstick for you. Um, apparently, I've seen on uh, a number of blogs and probably on Twitter, it is possible to open the hood. There's a the secret handle that's covered. <laughs> and you can remove the plastic and find the secret handle. So Cindy Cohn, the director, executive director of the Electric Chronic Frontier Foundation, gave the award for the worst privacy, and I wish Stacy were here for this, to the Singled Smart Health Monitoring Light Bulb. <laughs> this is a light bulb, says Cone, that's supposed to be monitoring your health, but really it's monitoring the humans in the room. The, the, the light bulb could track your sleep, heart rate, body temperature, and if you put a light bulb in every room, all over the house. This is one of the things she said where some people are like, we can do this thing, now let's find a need for it. <laughs> and then yeah. I, I guess the need for it was in case grandma falls down, she said. Of course, grandma has all sorts of other ways to tell you that she's fallen down uh, that are really only about surveilling her. 
and that she can control as opposed to this one, which is outside of grandma's control. Cohn said the idea that you need a light bulb to monitor your heart rate is just creepy, weird, and unnecessary. Yeah. And, of course, they don't say what happens to the data. Uh, they collect it. Right. Uh, Nathan Proctor, National Campaign Director for the Public Interest Nonprofit U.S. Perg, talked about the new Samsung TV that has its own NFT aggregation platform built in. <laughs> we did talk about that briefly. Did we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we did talk about that briefly. Okay. That's such a crock. <laughs> it is. A ginormous OLED Samsung TV. What does that, it even mean? It, you can use it to buy, sell, and display your NFT artwork. Jeez. Uh, well, I, sure. I know. We'll, 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 I'm, we're going to have the Wordle TV next. It'll last about as long. That's right. Nathan <laughs> says, I, if you don't know what an NFT is, I'm honestly jealous of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Roberts, Jeez. founder of SecureRepairs.org. Uh, chose John Deere's fully autonomous 8R tractor. This is actually was big news at CES, a tractor that you, you don't need to get into. You could just get set it and go back to the house and or milk your cows, as Mike uh, does. Um, yes. And, of course, uh, he's, he's criticizing it not because of known vulnerabilities, but because of the way John Deere engages with the secu security community. And they yeah, it's a problem for, for many years because tractors are so automated and they, you know, this is another case where you're not allowed to look under the hood, so to speak, of the electronics right. in mm -hmm. their tractors. But this tractor is, um, if John Deere is, you know, if their claims are correct, is really astonishing. Yeah. It's it's a fully self, it'll literally drive itself out of the barn, down the public highway to the field, and then it will do all the work in the field perfectly and then it, it can work 24 hours a day so it's it's really an astonishing piece of equipment the problem is of course that it costs nine hundred thousand dollars and farmers will have to go into debt more debt and uh and then they won't be able to fix it or do their own repairs etc well, or so, it'll replace workers in, in corporate farms right <clears throat> well yes yeah you know the, the some of these combines are so big it's like a living room on wheels yeah um uh, they're, they're um, pretty fascinating when yeah. you see them in person. Yeah. What's what's also a, a nice tidbit about the John Deere tractor is that the control for it, the remote control for it, is actually an, an a, a phone app. Wow. Yeah, they actually control it with their phone. Like, uh, remember that the James Bond from like 15 years ago where he was controlling a car with a, with his phone? It's just like that. So you can you can take remote control of the tractor with a phone, and again, this thing is the size of a you know of a building. Uh, and uh, and then you can you can monitor what it's doing, check its fuel, find out you know all the activities that it's doing. So it's pretty pretty amazing. It's a, it's a fundamental uh, advancement in automated farming. Mm -hmm. Speaking of automated farming, here's a teenager, David Colombo, who has took full remote control of over 20 Teslas in 10 countries. And there uh -oh. seems to be no way to find the owners and report it to them. This is his oh boy. tweet. He says, it's not a vulnerability in Tesla's infrastructure. It's the owner's faults. Uh, he can remotely run commands on 25 plus Teslas in 13 countries without the owner's knowledge, including disabling sentry mode, opening the doors or windows, starting keyless driving. I can query the exact location, see if a driver is present and so on. He could also play uh, Rick Astley on their Teslas and uh, Rick roll them. He can't, he says, uh, <laughs> stop the cars or uh, mess with the throttle or anything like this. I guess uh, it has to do with the app. Tesla's security team is investigating. Uh, in fact, there is a CVE assigned. So, And it's good that it was this kid uh, who discovered it not... <laughs> Not a not not a malicious hacker. Mm -hmm. it, it's a great plot for like a like a cheesy low budget B movie, where somebody gains access to twenty Teslas all in the same place and can drive them and has a swarm of Teslas that terrorize little towns all over across the country. <laughs> Automates. <laughs> yeah, he has. He's, he's not. Bloomberg interviewed him, uh, verified it by seeing screenshots and documentation. But he would. He didn't want them to reveal the specifics because uh, the, there isn't a fix out there uh, yet. 
but it's basically involves an insecure way the software stores information that's needed to link the cars uh, to the programs and uh, authentication tokens, I guess. Uh, you know, but why does this young man know this? Because he's he a doing? good little hacker boy. 19-year-old. I wonder if I can get into these Tesla He's an information technology security specialist. Look, we shouldn't knock people who do this as long as they do what he no, did, which is disclose responsibly. Yeah. Um, because the uh, other option is somebody finds it who decides to play with these people. Yeah. Instead of going to Tesla and saying, here, here you know. Um, he's a self-described Tesla fan. He lives in Germany. He started yeah. coding when he was 10 years old, frustrated with high school coursework. His father helped him petition German authorities to let him go to school two days a week and spend the rest of his time okay. expanding his cybersecurity skills. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that makes more sense now. Thank you. Tesla does have a bug bounty uh, program, so it may yeah. also... And, you know, honestly, I know it's a little scary, but we should not condemn people who do this. Thank God they do this. And re as long as they yeah. responsibly disclose and reveal it, yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're making things better. Uh, Agree. Although it's embarrassing. I'm sure Tesla would prefer he did not tweet that. <laughs> it's a little embarrassing. Anyway, that's the the right to repair worst of CES uh, for 2022. Um, oh, I, I didn't give you the worst in show overall, which Corey uh, says was Lenovo's new smart clock essential with Alexa. This is a device that you put next to your bed he says that if you make an unintelligible random sound, turns on and starts listening to everything you say. I think we have one of these actually in our bedroom. Uh, uh, Dr. O said, pointing to the work of security researchers who've looked into the data captured by Amazon's smart speaker system. That just feels to me like one of those things that right out of the gate we should be able to spot is not something we want in our homes. And in, in our bedrooms. Especially, yeah. Yeah, I got, I got, I got it all in my bed. I don't, you know what? Who the don't hell all cares? The sleep trackers have to have some sort of microphone. Um, no, I have a analysis. sleep. No, that's the way. Uh, that's the way Google's works. Mm -hmm. I have the sleep, the sleep beauty rest sleep tracker, which is just a paddle uh -huh. underneath the mattress, and Under I think it's mattress. it's using uh, radio waves to see movement and so forth, and AI to say, oh, that's breathing, oh, that's heartbeats, mm -hmm. oh, that's rolling over. Okay. Oh, that's a small animal. Oh, that's four people in this bed. That kind of thing. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, Leo, you say who the hell cares? You you have it in your bedroom and stuff like that. But the difference is that you spend all day, every day, thinking about technology, learn you know, learning what's happening in technology. You you, you write code. You understand fully. You are a full uh, participant in this thing, and you know what it's doing, and you're okay with it. The vast majority of the consumers of these devices have no idea. And if they did really understand what was happening, they wouldn't like it. Maybe that maybe that dislike is irrational, but they still wouldn't like it. So they, that's well, the part I, of it. I know I people find it creepy. I don't know. Is that a is that a is that a reasonable criterion though for uh, uh, pr prohibiting a technology? Oh, it's creepy. Well, I think I think that uh, Google actually does it a lot better than Amazon does. Google is very upfront about reminding users we're gathering this data. We right. have your location history. We here's a here's a link to the page with all the stuff we're capturing. Click here if you want to stop this. Click here if you want to delete that. They're very good at that. I I'm not aware of much of that at all for Amazon, where people are buying all these products. You have a lot of third party products you use. And people are installing them in their cars, their bedrooms, et cetera. And they don't, Amazon seems like they don't really want people to know exactly what they're doing. They probably don't want people to know what their robot is going to be doing in terms yeah. of mapping the house. They don't want people to know what their flying security camera is doing in terms of tracking things, recording video, uploading video and all that stuff. They see, it seems like they, they're just hoping nobody will notice and nobody will care. And I, that really bothers me. I would like a giant company like Amazon to be more responsible about it. Do what you're going to do, but get a, give everybody full disclosure and give them an easy option to opt out for whatever their reasons are. It's yeah. really none of Amazon's business what people's reasons are, whether it's rational or not. People should know what the product does, and, and, and especially in terms of recording conversations. Remember the Fire Phone 
the disastrous smartphone that Amazon came out with had a single button. If you wanted to recognize a carton of milk and what the company was or whatever, you'd point it at it and you push the button. And when you did that, it recorded audio, 15 seconds of audio and uploaded that audio. So people are thinking I'm, I'm taking a picture, but it was capturing everything you were saying. Unnecessarily. And was that, that was probably a bug, not well, it was a it was a bug in Amazon's culture. That's my point. They just yeah. don't care about that stuff as much as they should. I yeah. I I, I guess I mean I feel like I uh, I'm being made to feel guilty for not really caring if somebody hears me me snoring or you know I but mean it's you, like but you you know what it's doing and you agree right. to it and and that's fine. I'm I'm in the same yeah, boat. I I agree with I you. Amazon either, but, should have more clear. I have literally in my bedroom. An Amazon device, a Google device, and an Apple Siri you know, right. HomePod. Uh, I have <laughs> They're everything all listening. bored to tears. Yeah, and Somewhere it's, each it's of those boring. companies, somebody's saying, would Leo finally do something interesting? Even if, <laughs> even if Lisa and I had a fight or I, I said, I, I, I just want to let you know, Lisa, just between you and me, I'm going to murder Jeff Jarvis tomorrow. Even if, <laughs> even if that, I don't, it's like. There's plenty of cause, I know. <laughs> no, I mean, it's like. Who cares? And if, in fact, I did yeah. murder you and the police Jeff got a hold does. of that, they would rightly put me in jail. And that would be good because yeah. I should go to jail for murdering you. But there are people who know as much as you do who oppose it. And I understand. But that here's my problem is their opposition is limiting what I can do. So it's it's fine for everybody to make that judgment. And, not, and I know lots of people, including... Yeah people on the show who refuse to have these devices in their house that's fine yeah. Yeah. but but i don't want some moral pant folks oh, i'm sorry I, there we go. I knew oh, you were ahead of there oh, yay oh, oh. god damn it you I got me over. you got me in a free amazon echo <laughs> there's a game we're playing to see if they can get me to say it and i lost no i don't i don't want somebody else's uh you know kind of nebulous creepy fear to yeah. to to yeah. stop the technologies that i think might be useful I agree, and I, I that's why I say that it should just about disclosure. They should yeah. do all the things that's they're reasonable. doing, uh, but have you be able to go? Nope, I don't want. I mean, like what Apple did recently with the the tracking thing for third party apps. They have a, a new feature where it says when you install a new app, it says uh, this app would like to track you across the internet. You want to reject that, and you just click one button, and yeah. you're out. That's reasonable. Yeah. That's, that's the way to do it. Yeah, I think. Uh, you know, I got to point out that that Apple button is meaningless. That Apple. Uh, is simply turning off the Apple ID for ad advertisers. And there's plenty yes. of other ways to track you across the internet. So in a way, well, that's a kind of a misleading switch. There's that ways Apple's for Apple to track oh, wow. you, but not the little app. Uh, Google could track you. I mean, there's there's lots of ways to yes. track you um, that don't require IDFA. And I think Apple knows that. And I think Apple's a little cynical uh, saying, look, see, mm -hmm. we care about your mm -hmm. privacy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They're, they're it, double dealing there. Yeah, but I mean, there there's so many stories about flashlights that were uploading data to China and stuff like that. That's like, well, that's not right. I wish I would have had the option to to say no to I that guess. kind of thing. Yeah, but um, I don't. So uh, yeah, I guess. And I, and everybody always says, oh, you're you're in the privileged position, blah blah blah. That's fine. Yes, all right. I don't. Well, know. I mean, the thing as a journalist working with uh, you know uh, confronting all the different tech companies about privacy issues, Amazon is the worst. I mean, they. Yeah. They they just stonewall you if they don't want to talk about it. They they're very cagey. They're very secretive. They're very problematic in terms of their relationship with the press. Google is one of the best companies in that. Regard. I wish I, Amazon be better. I think Amazon Sidewalk, for instance, is a really cool technology, which yeah. is a non-starter because people because uh, people don't oh more. It's payable. It's PR. It could be, it could be so easily, which is Mike's point. It could be so easily fixed. They could fix it. It's just PR. Yeah, so easily. Yeah, but they yeah, yeah they don't. And Mike's point too is right. It's they're also about. Deaf. Um, uh, culture. Yeah. 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 Yep. Move fast, break things. All right, let's take a quick break. Our episode uh, this week brought to you by, uh, this is a new sponsor. I want to welcome New Relic. Not a new name, I think, probably to most people listening. If you're a software engineer, you know, you've heard, and I hope you've tried. If you haven't, I want you to know you can try it for free forever. You don't even have to give them a credit card. New Relic. What is it? Oh, I'm glad you asked. New Relic it instruments your entire stack so that when you get that 3 a.m. phone call, something's gone wrong and the app isn't working. You don't have to scramble around calling people, dreading the call from the CEO, what's going on. You can immediately fix it. You've, we've all been there. 
if you're a software engineer, a network engineer, a sysadmin, you you know you're you're fast asleep. Phone rings three in the morning. Something's broken. Something's wrong. The the server's not working. The app's not working. And you're going. What is it? Is it the back end? Is it the front end? Is it global? Is it the server? Is it the network? Is it the cloud provider? Do I have slow running queries? Oh God! Did I push a bug in my last deploy? Oh my God! The whole team's scrambling. They've got all these different tools they're trying. The they're messaging each other like crazy to find and fix the issue. Now, if you had New Relic, like all these companies do. You wouldn't have that problem. You'd go to the source. You'd fix it. You'd go back to bed. Sad thing is, and this is a, a new... Uh, we, we had a great conversation with uh, New Relic. They told me half of organizations, only half, have are implementing observability for their networks and systems. Only half. That means the other half are getting up at 3 in the morning and scrambling like crazy people. The report shows that maintaining network observability continues to be an issue for companies around the world. It shouldn't be. It will not happen. Just get New Relic. New Relic combines 16 different monitoring products, things you might put together yourself separately. But as a whole, they give you complete observability across your entire software stack in one place. Of the 16 tools, there's application monitoring. There's an APM, which you could put in your apps or your microservices. It even, it even, it can give you the line of code. It could say, you know, it knows the symbol table. It'll say, this function's breaking. This database query is frozen. That kind of thing. Use Kubernetes. You'll love Pixie. Gives you instant Kubernetes observability and then availability. Distributed tracing. See all your traces without management headaches so that you can find and fix issues fast. There's network performance monitoring, so you don't have to guess where the issues are. Ditch those data silos for a system-wide correlated view and so much more. Pinpoint issues down to the line of code, so you know exactly why the problem happened. You can fix it and fix it right. That's why all these companies, the devs and ops teams at DoorDash and GitHub and Epic Games, 14,000 other companies use New Relic to debug and improve their software. It's not just for Ruby anymore. New Relic is amazing. It does everything. Whether you run a cloud-native startup or a Fortune 500 company, it takes five minutes to set up New Relic in your environment. That 9 p.m. call is just waiting to happen. That could happen tonight. So don't wait. Get New Relic now. You'll be able to set it up fast. You can get access to the entire platform and 100 gigabytes a month of data free forever no credit card you don't even have to give them a credit card you'll have it set up in five minutes you can go to bed tonight and sleep through the night <laughs> you'll love it sign up right now newrelic.com slash twig there is zero reason why you should be in mystery the next time you get that the servers are down n-e-w-r-e-l-i-c newrelic.com slash twig i know a lot of people rely on new relic and if you're not, why not? NewRelic.com slash twig. E3, by the way, has announced that they're not going to have an in-person event this year because of Omicron. E3 is uh, in the spring? It's, it's Los Angeles, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, LA's locked down. California, got yeah. we got heavy lockdown all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, there is, uh, I did see uh, a group of people come back from CES with the vid, with the Rona, Ms. Rona, paying them in a visit. Um, For all the number of people who got sick with something is way down this year. I mean, every year in the past, you know, it, was, it was it was a super spreader event of every flu and virus. Oh, and God, everybody goes home sick, right? Yeah, yeah. I actually beat it the last time. We were there two years ago. And I, I almost washed my hands raw. This is before COVID, but I washed my hands at every opportunity. And that actually helped yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, if I'd known about it, I would have worn a mask. 70 you're gonna South. Masks as, yeah, you're going to see masks at CES oh, from, from now, now on. on. I guarantee it. Masks yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Masks everywhere. Why not? I like, you know, we've learned about masks. We now know, you know, that the, you need a, a good N95. You need a good seal. We kind of know how to wear them. Why right. not? Like, wash your hands. Uh, 70 South Korean attendees uh, at CES have tested positive now for COVID-19. I think this is just the beginning. Oh, yeah. Just the beginning. 
70 cases. Uh, that's because they test in South Korea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Samsung, SK, Hyundai heavy employees are testing positive. Uh, South Korea health officials are turning an, are urging anyone who went to CES to get a PCR test. Um, Nevada says no evidence linking that surge with CES. Oh, <laughs> Except they all went to CES. Okay, fine. <laughs> fine. South Korea had really had, was doing a good job and had really cut down. That's why they're very aware of all of this. Right. Many Korean business people who attended CES are now confirmed to be infected with COVID-19, said a senior South Korean health ministry official. I really feel like Omicron is, you know, it's, 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 really, it's really slipping past a lot of the mitigations. And your best bet is just to be vaccinated so that if you get it, you, it doesn't... I think we're all going to get it. And yeah, and yeah. if you're vaccinated and boosted, but I think the boosting is pretty important. My kids yep. both got it. Uh, they're both vaccinated. And right. They were fine. I mean, you know, they got it. They were unhappy. Right. But they didn't, they didn't have to go to the hospital. Uh, yeah. I think I think Jennifer got it too. Their mom got it too. But uh, again, boosted, didn't have to go to the hospital. Well, I'm, I'm debating. My my 95 year old father has an appointment tomorrow. He gets uh, macular degeneration shots in his eye twice a month, and the place is always crowded. And you know, I don't know. Yeah, it's, yeah. that's the other. I mean, I'm I'm really trying hard not to have a heart attack because this yeah, would yeah. be a bad time, wouldn't it? Right. You schedule yeah. that for later. I'll schedule that for later. Exactly. Exactly. But it's, you know, but it's amazing. I mean, I've been this last year, well, last year, um, we went to Europe three times, went to Mexico like six or seven times, and I've never gotten COVID. Um, it's, it's astonishing. Me and I, neither. I but I think that this is a different beast now, right? Yeah. Yep. I, I think so. And, and and really, that's, that's the future because it's going to become endemic. It's going to be floating around. People are going to die from from uh, COVID every year from now on. Tens of thousands of people will die from COVID. Just as they do with the flu. 60,000 like people a year die of the flu. And yes. there's going to be new shots every year, every two years, whatever it is. And that's just life now. So, But let's not get too cavalier about, I mean, I, the people I know who have long haul, you know, it's not long haul flu, but there is long haul COVID. Yeah, people yeah, I know yeah. two years yes. in. Right, we just don't know. In Omicron, we have it's too it's too new to know what the impact's going to be. So it's still yep. freaky. Was yes. it you who put this story in about the guy's genitals shrinking? No, did I put that in there? No, I'm sorry, oh, I, I, put, I put it in my Twitter feed. <laughs> oh, that's where I saw it. <laughs> so here's the funny thing. So I, I, I'm checking Australian news funny. sites <laughs> constantly <laughs> because I I want to see what's going on with Novak Djokovic, right? Oh, yeah. And so, Boy, what a horrible I, story that is. Jeez. So I put up this thing uh, uh, from um, news.com.au, or news. Yeah, news.com.au, which is the Murdoch uh, a portal. Man's penis shrinks after COVID diagnosis. No, go to the other one first. It goes, it's, it's in a thread. So um, <laughs> it gets better when he says it was his above average manhood. It was above and average, so man. Right, which 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 strikes me is I don't, this is a reference to the George uh, on Seinfeld shrinkage. In the ocean yes. episodes. Right, COVID is the new shrinkage. Yeah. Shrinkage. Yes. It was above average. I swear. <laughs> oh, the best part is doctors warn it will likely be permanent. <laughs> 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 That's Rupert right there in a nutshell. That's the basically the opposite of long COVID, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Short COVID. Oh, gosh. Oh! Oh! oh. I'm so glad Stacy's not here. <laughs> oh, what do you man. think of this? I don't know what I think of this. I saw this in the New York Times. A 22-year-old actor, he, uh, he came to New York City from a small town in Georgia, uh, TikToked like crazy about his tiny apartment and... How he came to New York, for, you know, to achieve his dreams of stardom on Broadway. Said, I'm going to be, um, tomorrow, I'm auditioning for a Juilliard uh, school's undergraduate drama program. Most, one of the most prestigious acting schools in the world. He uh, does a live stream when he gets the verdict from Juilliard after his audition. Reads it aloud for his audience of 2.4 million followers on TikTok. It was a rejection. You are no longer under consideration for admission for fall 2022, he read. 
Miss, this is New York Times. Mr. Weber looked crestfallen. Now we're going to have to find a different way to be an actor. Thanks for watching the journey. The next night, tens of thousands of fans flooded Juilliard's Instagram account to express their anger. <laughs> you are so done for not getting Axel in. 21,000 likes on that comment. Users started the hashtag justice for Axel. Left more than oh, a left justice? More, justice. The you know, he's probably worked? a terrible actor, right? <laughs> <laughs> left more, but he's a TikTok star, so left more than a thousand one star reviews of Juilliard on Google, tanking the school's search results with negative reviews. Some fans spoke of planning an in-person protest at Juilliard's campus. Oh Weber, by the way, to his credit, is not yeah, encouraging it. No, he says, I do appreciate all the responses, but people are absolutely tearing them to shreds. I'm grateful. We don't have to bash Juilliard. I want right. to spread positivity. Um, maybe he had something to do with all of the TikToking, right? He was working uh, at a as a bouncer at a pirate-themed restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the pirate theme. It's just perfect. That's just the greatest touch. I... I <laughs> there probably probably when he went in for his audition, he Arr, probably played a pirate. I am the pirate. <laughs> That's all I know now. I have I a monologue. Part. I'd like to share with you. It's too bad. I'm he the got Jeremy rejected, Strong of pirates. Know, but again, they, if he didn't fit what they were looking for, he didn't fit. It happens. You, yeah. you know, I was I was going to apply to Juilliard, but I saw their their they only had two stars. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow, they've really gone downhill. They only accept twenty kids a year. It's not a big program. Yeah. Uh, does not mean that he is not you know. He's just not right or whatever. There he, he here he is. Fit what they were looking for at that particular time. Yeah. That happens. Two he's million followers, back. including many influential yeah. content creators. It looks like he's in LA now. He'll do just fine. What, what's hilarious is like, oh, I'll have to find another way to be an actor. He said to more people than saw the last, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the last <laughs> James Bond movie. So. <laughs> Uh, You're on uh, fire, Mike. Yeah, that's true. Um, he uh, anyway. So oh, that's oh. I don't know. I, is this good or bad, or is there anything to say about this hashtag? It, is, it is bad if Juilliard comes back and says, "Hey, you know what? We made a mistake. That would be bad. You're hired. Yeah. That's that's that that would I would have a problem with that because yeah. that means they only reacted because of some fans on a social media platform made right. them look bad." That's right. Not, no, no. He does now have a, a talent manager in Los Angeles, uh, Diomi Cordero, who also uh, represents an actor on Euphoria. Uh, I think he's probably going to find. There was work. a series of stories a few years ago about how, you know, uh, Hollywood TV shows and Hollywood studios wanted to get in on this whole influencer thing. So they thought, oh, we'll we'll bring in some youtube insta you know influencers and have them be a have a guest spot on our show yeah. and so they would send they you know they'd send a note to to the influencer saying hey you know we have a huge opportunity for you finally you're going to make it big and you can be on our show and they, and they they get a reply from the agent saying well mr so-and-so or miss so-and-so um, is willing to do that under the following conditions. They need $10 million and they need their own trailer and they need, the, because the power was really at that point with the influencers and Hollywood hadn't yeah, gotten the memo the at that point. So the, yeah, so it was, it was like, it was really the, the YouTube influencer doing a favor to the TV studio. They didn't um, get it. All that they thought they were doing them a favor. Yep. Exactly. So I think, you know, I think this guy's already got his medium. I agree. Clearly. I agree. TikTok is kind of amazingly powerful it yeah. really is interesting yep. yeah uh get ready uh android 12l beta 2 is rolling out for pixel phones that means if i'm saying that it must be time for the <laughs> in fairness <laughs> there was no way to see that <laughs> that was really mean of you. Uh, that that, that that's, that's somebody taking a little break thinking I'm going to have a cacio e pepe puff because he's going to do another story I, before I have to worry. I waited until John got up and started to walk away and then I did it, of course. <laughs> that was very mean. That was that was really mean of you. That's really edging you enjoyed into it the change way log. too much. You just kind of 
Uh, you know, I can blame. It's all I blame the Noah Tropics. That's what's that's what <laughs> that's what's going on there. Google uh, is still not still no word. I keep checking my Pixel every Same day. Same sir. Still no update. You know, you are joined now by Marquez Brownlee, who said that his aunt hates his Pixel Six. He says super buggy. Marquez says, I'm taking the SIM out. This thing is is gotten buggier and buggier, and I'm putting it back into my Samsung S21 uh, because I can't I can't use it. I haven't had the same problems, but maybe there's hardware problems. issues, or it's, I don't know. It's, it's clearly, for me, it's clearly software. It, I don't think it's a hardware problem. I think it's the, the OS, and it, it's so annoying, the little things that I do. I hit the back button, and the screen goes back three times, two or three times. Yeah. That does sound one. like software, yeah. Bluetooth still just randomly drops in the middle of me listening to the audio book that we're going to discuss in the Club Twit book club. And How yeah, does the uh, fingerprint reader work for you? Uh, that's been, that's okay. Uh, it's definitely not as good as the hardware button. Uh, I just have to tell myself, really press, because it doesn't work if I don't really press on it. Yeah, because the um, reason I ask is Mary Jo Foley also uses a Pixel 6 Pro, says it just doesn't work at all for her. But I think mm. she may... Um, and I have a screen protector I, on, too. Yeah. Here's Marquez's tweet. My Pixel 6 Pro has slowly gotten so buggy since launch, I can no longer recommend it at $900. Combined with the latest botched update, it's just been a bad experience. My SIM is back in an S21 Ultra till the next review. Oh, wow. That's pretty harsh. And yeah. he has a lot. He carries a lot of weight. He's not a TikTok star or anything like no. that. But he, <laughs> but he has also been one to back Google's yeah. uh, Pixel projects too. You know, this isn't just sour grapes. He says lots of small annoying things. The display constantly drops way below 120 hertz. The fingerprint sensor is still slower than the rest. The lock screen and auto brightness bug out all the time now. The camera app has started slowing down. Um, boy, that's sad. Camera did slow down for me. Um, uh, uh, part of my pick of the week, which we'll get into later, I was out on a shoot using the camera, and it, it was a bit slow that day. And I'm thinking, what, what is wrong? I thought it was just me, but I noticed it was a little bit laggy between making the contact with the shutter and, and even navigating through the files. But again, yeah, that's all seems like software to me, not hardware. He says he's on the November patch, as, as most of us are, except for those mm -hmm. unfortunate few who got the update by accident or early when they, <laughs> and they lost all connectivity. That so borked forth. it more. That borked it even more. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, they're doing the 12L Beta 2 right now, which means we might be getting close. They had said it'll be delayed, uh, you know, the, the update, which supposedly will fix many of these issues. Uh, was supposed to be released in December. It'll be delayed. Um, they say there'll be one more beta next month before the consumer release. What? In Q1 March? Wow. That's ridiculous. Oh, my gosh. That's ridiculous. You know what? I'm starting to agree with, agree with you, Mike. Sundar Pichai, not doing the job. Some yeah. some somebody needs to take the control of that company. Yeah, say look, folks, we got a, a too big OS right now with an expensive piece of hardware that people can enjoy. We need to fix it's this. our it's flagship. It's already gone through testing uh, before we released it. So yeah, this needs to be priority one. You know, maybe Rick Osterlo lost his mojo or something. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, 12L is not the Pixel Fix. Sorry. Okay. 12L is something else. Sorry. That's that's yeah. coming out. In, I don't know when the Pixel Fix is coming out. It's, Here's what uh, Google is changing uh, to speaker group controls and device setup to uh, uh, appease Sonos. Uh, the first change applies when setting up and updating your smart display or speaker. A small set of users will need to use the device utility app to complete product installation and updates. You may, geez, Louise, you may receive a prompt to download and run Dua, and it will ensure your device is connected to Wi-Fi and receives the most updated version. It only has to be used once during the initial setup of devices that don't have the latest, ah, I get it, the non-infringing firmware. So the Dua will right. immediately fix your firmware to be non-infringing, and then... 
you'll now have to adjust each speaker individually instead of being able to use the group volume control. That was a nice feature. I remember on my Sonos speakers, one slider would turn everybody uh, in the whole house up and down. It's not so bad. You're going to get, this is an example of on the screen, you know, a number of sliders and you can control those. Third-party devices have to be updated to new cast firmware. Besides the volume change, Google says speaker group functionality remains the same. Um, most most speaker groups should continue to function as expected, unless <laughs> you have a speaker group mm -hmm. containing other brands of cast-based devices like JBL or Lenovo, then they need to be on 1.52.272222 or higher cast firmware, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, you know, the Trade Commission ruled against him, said, we're not going to ban your devices, but you better fix this, and this is the fix. <laughs> the Pixel Launcher at a Glance widget, if you are using a Pixel phone, is going to have doorbell camera previews. Uh, this is also part of the Android 12 update. You'll be able to customize the at a Glance widget. And even, look at that, even have a little picture on the at a glance. See that right there of uh, somebody at your doorbell? That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Woo. Yeah. Woo. Woo -hoo. Yeah. It means nothing if the existing platform isn't working worth it. I think right you're right. right. Let's, <laughs> let's not worry so much about that. Let's get the thing working. Yeah. Get Ant's phone fixed, people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is good. Uh, you may remember that Google started doing system patches to Android through Google's Play Store updates because they could push those without the carrier blocking them. Uh, they could push them to older phones and so forth. So now they're finally, and they never did this, giving you a log of what's been changed when you get the Play System update. Just as you do when you get a version update, now you can go and cool. click the Google Play System update and it will tell you, you can manually update uh, but it'll also tell you uh, what is uh, happening. There's a new support page that uh, spells out what's new in the patches. Here's the January 22nd, 2022, I should say, uh, patch, the critical fixes. Uh, and here's the Play Store Play as you download feature, blah, 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 blah new features. So this is one way uh, Google's updating phones that are not, this is not part of the, the monthly security update. So that's good to get that information. Now available. Uh, on your phone and also online. And finally, Google launches Ripple, an open standard that could bring tiny radars to Ford cars. So I didn't know this, but Google has been building radar chips for about seven years. Uh, that's what tells you how you sleep, that radar in my paddle. Not that paddle, the other paddle, the sleep paddle under my bed. Uh, you can control. It. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I, I want. I want a diagram of all the all the electronics <laughs> in the bedroom. <laughs> Just stop. <laughs> Where do you put your paddle? Anyway, uh, <laughs> in the basement, of course. <laughs> oh yeah, the dungeon. Well, you gotta. Have, okay, so you have one in the dungeon, but you might need one in. <laughs> There might be discipline needed uh, at other times. I'm just saying. Oh, man. Uh, you can control. <laughs> oh. The company's Soli radar, that's the Soli, uh, of course, was in the last Pixel phones, but uh, uh, didn't, didn't really. Uh, that's the one where you could go like this to your phone and make it do things. Now there is an open source API standard. See, if Stacy were here, she could probably explain this, called Ripple, that will basically put Soli in S-O-L-I, in uh, automobiles and other things. Yeah. Um, Ripple, quote, this is from uh, Ivan Puparev, the man who uh, led the team at Google's ATAP Skunk Works that came up with Soli. Uh, Puparev says, Ripple will unlock helpful innovation that benefits everyone. General purpose radar is a key emerging technology for solving critical use cases in a privacy respecting way. The Ripple project is open source. It's on GitHub. Oh, well, maybe not. It's copyright. But it is on GitHub. Well, I thought it's open source. So I... <sighs> so it depends well, on what you define as open source. You oh. Publishing the source does not necessarily make it open source. It's the license that matters. 
It's right. open source ish. Ish. You have to sign so, a Google open source license agreement to participate. A couple of things. When they first rolled out Soli, they were talking about a very sophisticated technology that could detect the finest movements. They they were promising that someday Google would have Soli on smartwatches and you'd be able to change the time by just moving your fingers ever so slightly. I love and that. Then oh, the yeah, actual, I remember that. The actual implementation of it is like big, big movements. But I, I just, it, it could be a problem in a car if it's implemented and somebody accidentally you know, flip somebody off and then that's perceived as a gesture for turning the, 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 the radio on full blast or something like that. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure how this is going to be implemented, but hopefully Ford would out. not tell The Verge what it plans to do with Soli, but only that it's looking at using, quote, interior radar to do things its exterior radars aren't doing today. What could that mean? Well, people should 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 know that the the self-driving cars of the future will have as many sensors pointing at the dash as there are sensors outside. How come pointing at the world? Because a big part of how how they'll function is they'll constantly be detecting emotion, stress, conflict. Uh, they really want to see who is the, who's in the car so they can customize. Uh, information settings in the seats and all that kind of stuff. So there, there's a huge amount of uh, uh, effort in Silicon Valley to build up all these sensors. They want to see if um, even before the the self-driving cars are self-driving, want to make sure that if people are falling asleep or if they're drunk, they want to be able to tell all that through sensors so they can turn on or turn off certain safety features, certain self-driving features. And so this, it looks like uh, Google has decided to jump into that existing uh, nascent uh, market with an existing technology that was originally promised for smartphones and, and wearables. So that's basically appears to be what this is. And they you know they they talk they don't talk so much about super future stuff because they want to get in early. There are certain startups that specialize in this kind of thing that are kind of gobbling up all the mind share um, for car makers. But so I think Google, Google wants to sort of get in there and, and establish themselves as a technology that car makers want to use and build into their cars. Not just That's car makers. There there there's like pet chip pet collar yeah. chip makers that want to uh, measure your dog's internals like uh, blood you know, pressure and heart rate and temperature with one of these things. They, the Amazon's apparently looking into uh, bed sensors to measure sleep. So lots of uses I mean, for this. That's actually kind of The fact cool. is that with AI and, and, and increasingly better sensors, everything and anything, including, as we learned, light bulbs, will be able to detect yes. yep. the state of being yep. uh, in multiple ways. And this is especially going to be true inside cars. Uh, and in our homes and our desks and so on, but especially in cars. There's another company, Bloomio, has a dev kit for a radar-based blood pressure sensor. So that's interesting. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot of health implications as well. So yeah. good. Soli's not dead. It was a cool technology. Uh, the Pixel 4 did not show it off well. Nobody used it, and so they took it out. But I think there are lots of uses for it. Yeah. And, and now it's called Ripple. And that's the Google Change Law. Couple more uh, stories before we get to our picks of the week. The Associated Press is going to sell NFTs. <laughs> now that now that makes them totally uncool, and so nobody's going to do them anymore. When when I was a kid, I wanted to wear a Nehru jacket. My parents wouldn't let me. Yeah. And then Johnny Carson wore it. And yeah. I said, Okay, now you can wear it. And I said, No, no I don't, don't want to wear it. it. Johnny's wearing <laughs> it. Uh, you probably put this in. Uh, New York Times buys the Athletic. What is the Athletic? The Athletic is, I'm glad we're a fellow, a fellow um, non-jock here. Um, it is a uh, kind of the major brand for a paywalled uh, a service covering major sports. Oh. Ant can probably tell us more about Do you about subscribe this to The anybody. Athletic, Ant? I do not because it was paywalled. Oh. Yep, right. <laughs> Ant is but also not one an Athletic two... supporter. <laughs> right. <laughs> I paid yeah, for a few things, before. and that wasn't one. No. <laughs> uh, uh, 1 1.2 million subscribers. What it tells me wow. is that the Times is going to create a whole bunch of subscription products. When they were they report how many subscribers they have, 8 million subscribers, that counts separately, but included in one, one bucket, the new subscribers, the food subscribers, and the puzzle subscribers. Yeah, I subscribe to New York Times Crossword Puzzles, New York Times Cooking, 
a wire cutter has a subscription, right? Um, and then in the newspaper, I think though I, I buy one subscription that covers it all. Or but, do, but the point here is that if all you subscribe to is food, you are counted as a New York Times subscriber. Yes. Well, that, why right? not? That's his revenue for the New York. I mean, I think so, that's probably right. a good so revenue stream. I think us. what they did was they got a million two added right. in, and um, uh, so so uh, my friend Aaron Pilhofer, who's at uh, Temple University, who's brilliant, ex New York Times, ex Guardian, uh, wrote this piece that I have in there saying that. This is dangerous for local newspapers. There's been a lot of debate about this. Does this mean the Times is going to come after the local newspapers? And if you subscribe to the Chronicle just because you want Giants coverage, uh, do you say, well, screw it. I'll, start, I'll do the New York Times and the Athletic because they offered me a bundle deal and I don't like the local papers and that's it. I don't know. This um, is what's happened in cable television. Uh, all mm -hmm. the cable companies, including and Fox and others, have created new uh, sports channels where they do local sports. In, yep. in, in direct competition to the local channels. Uh, yep. And they furthermore, they cover lo local sports probably better in a more detail. I was going to say, I, I've enjoyed that yeah. bit of a pivot myself. It's been good, um, it's been good for sports fans, absolutely. Mm -hmm. you, choice, can you yeah. get Clemson games here? Probably through a... I do. Yeah. Streaming or well, that's not, that sounded like you didn't want to confess something. Oh, I haven't. I haven't. No, I'm saying I haven't missed. I haven't missed a beat. Uh, with, with what is it? FS1, I believe is how it is. Yeah, Fox Basically Sports One. Fox yeah, Sports. Sports. yeah, yeah. And it's, it's been great to be able to see the the regional stuff. You know, I know yeah, no one over here cares about App State University, but I'm curious. I think that's the idea on. with the athletic, right? You've got 270 teams, 47 markets. You get local coverage, and I think that could be a threat to the Chronicle. And, other local newspapers. So the athletic came also, also when it started, they said, we're going to, and they did this, we're going to steal all the best sports writers from all the newspapers in the country. Right. They did. They got them. Yeah. And then they built a subscription product. Uh, now, I don't understand this. Maybe, Aunt, maybe you can explain this to me. Uh, ESPN, as I understand it, has kind of been on a somewhat of a downward slope, but I don't understand why that is. Um, because is ESPN, ESPN has been sensationalizing things that shouldn't necessarily be sensationalized in my opinion um there's a lot of what they call them top plays that are nothing and they just play it over and over and over oh. and over again and and it's not connecting to the true sports fans it's more generalized it's link you know, bait. basketball is a yeah link bait. basketball is a great game but not everything in basketball is a slam dunk Right. You know, and that's right. what ESPN <laughs> has been doing for the last several years. That's really true. It I never even that's thought of that, but it takes away from the idea of there's a strategic hole, there's a plan, there there's a, a way a team plays. You're just focusing on that one shot. Right. Uh, I never thought of that, but that really does take it away. YouTube TV has this feature. Uh, I was working on Sunday during the the big Niners game, the last game of the season where they had to beat the Rams to get in the playoffs. LA. Yeah. And um, but when you go home and watch YouTube TV, it has the key plays and there's 49 of them which was showed you what mm -hmm. a crazy game it was and uh so lisa and i said because she didn't watch it either uh, it was too stressful for her we sat down <laughs> we watched the 49 plays but it's completely out of context it's actually not a very satisfying experience you're yeah. seeing the touchdowns and the great passes and stuff but it's like boom 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 and I you don't, don't get the you get get the shape of the game I don't have a problem with highlights, but I think there's a nuanced way of doing highlights to report the story of, okay, the team A played team B, and team A was down for a little bit, but team A was able to prevail and win the game. I think there's a nice way of doing that and not just having every single thing shown be a touchdown. I think know? there are a number of uh, factors here. One of them is sports betting. Uh, yeah, there's that. <laughs> because, uh, you know, it's big business. If you're, yep. it gets to the point where all you care about is the over under. What's the score? You know, um, well, that's the other point of this purchase is that the athletic has been pure subscription revenue, no advertising. So the New York Times can bring advertising to, but what's the big advertising in sports? In, in the old newspaper days, it was tires. Now it's sports betting. It's gambling. And how yeah, much does felt, the New York Times want takes, to be known for betting? And it's a little, I think, concerning. They take a cut uh, of sports betting. So suddenly they're profiting based on the take, which I think is complete. I mean, that's a let's put Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame in that case. because yeah. uh, Right. Same thing. That's completely. <laughs> well, here in New York, because New York just opened up sports betting online, Caesars has been advertising like crazy. And you see, you see players in the ads. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same just, thing. Ew. Yeah, well, that's all gone. You know, this is more of the... 
you know, we're old timers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the world has changed. So I got, a I got a question for you, all three of you. Um, we, we've been approached by a sports betting, very big name group to do advertising. And I said, no. Should I say yes to that? Why not? Well, I, it's, I it's don't look at it any differently from, from us talking about crypto because that's a bit of a gamble. We do some crypto ads, about. yeah. I mean, we don't ads, do ads specifically for crypto, but there's a credit card with crypto uh, uh -huh. rewards. I think we have Coinbase. So, yep. yeah, we have some crypto on here. And for a while, I was a little funny about that. We don't do e-cigs. Right. <clears throat> I don't know. It's a little weird. I mean, I, uh, what do you think, Mike? Should I... Should I, I this, am I being old-fashioned? No, I think I think you called it. I mean, I've I've always um, uh, loved your advertising because they're actually really great products. And I basically I think yeah. I've bought every single thing you've advertised that <laughs> a person who doesn't have a house could possibly buy. <laughs> and he's gotten and me I, like that too. <laughs> yeah, and so it's, it's like so the, the, there there's stuff where it's like yeah I want that I know I want that and there are other things where it's like well I don't know if I want it or not but if it's being advertised on Twit then I probably do want it so I'll just get it. And if you veer off into, you know, I think a lot of tech people are like me, which is that not interested in sports. A lot of tech people are interested in sports, of course, but yeah. I don't know. It just seems like it's, uh, it seems like it's a detour from the, 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 the policy that has worked very well, at least for yeah. me as a, as a consumer. We, I mean, because uh, advertising has been a little scant in, in, you know, our natural um, mm -hmm. environs we've been willing to you know we people still give right. me a hard time about doing manscaping ads but um so i accept ads in a broader uh, range mm -hmm. of categories than we thought we yeah, would right. just because to keep the lights on yeah keep the lights on well, yeah but but see when when you do manscaping ads you're you you're going after really really good products so i don't know anything about sports betting or any that world at all if it's a superior product or if it's you know something like that if you personally would use it or whatever i don't like to i feel like i think my personal philosophy is gambling is a sucker's bet <laughs> and i don't i yeah, think our, well, i don't want to promote i wouldn't take lottery tickets either you know that's the problem i'm the same way with the lottery yeah I, I, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and yet I mean, I don't want to be, I'm not, a, it's not a moral judgment. I just, right. I don't know. I had to really think. Well, about it is, it is a, it is a regressive redistribution of wealth. <laughs> but so is everything. <laughs> so is Bitcoin. <laughs> I would like to redistribute some wealth myself. Like, like I said, the yeah. same can be said about the stock market. The same could be said yeah. about crypto. It's all gambling in a certain. It is. Sense. And I, so it's a, it's a, you know, it's a challenge, you know, it's a, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, not to mention the fact that my wife is runs the business and sells the advertising, so I have to deal with <laughs> deal with her when I say no. So that was um, another gamble. Yeah, she's actually really supportive. She, you know, she said, "Well, you don't want to do this, do you?" I said, "No." We were we were in agreement on that. So yeah, yeah. Let's take a little break. Final words. Your picks of the week. Thank you so much for being here, Mike. I really appreciate your filling yeah. in on last Glad to be here. Last minute notice. It's always great to have you on. Really appreciate it. I Thank want to you. tell you about Code Academy, by the way. Uh, I know a lot of people ask me how I want to get into coding. It's one of my passions. I love it. It's my hobby. And they say, where's a good way to do it? I think Code Academy is a great way, whether you want to become a programmer, and if it's a really good place if you want to get a new career as a programmer, you're just getting out of school and you want to brush up your skills. But it's also a great place. I've taken their classes just to kind of learn a new language or brush up. They've got some, they actually have some really great um uh, what do they call them? I can't remember, but the little cards with the reference cards and stuff like that. There's lots of great tools. Code Academy is a great place to learn to code. There's never been a better time to become a programmer. With Code Academy, you can code on your own terms. Over 50, this is an amazing number, 50 million people already know Code Academy is the best way to learn to code. That's because Code Academy not only teaches you job-ready coding skills, it helps you build unique projects for your portfolio. That's very important. Earn certificates. That's also important. Even prep for technical interviews. One of the things I love about Code Academy is your coding from day one. And they have classes. I've taken their Python classes, but they have classes in HTML, CSS. They've got a whole new Swift track. If you want to learn to write for the most popular smartphone platform, uh, Swift is a great language. Apple's all Swift now. With Codecademy, you can learn at your own pace. 
great way to get qualified for jobs that are in high demand, whether it's building basic websites to artificial intelligence to robotics and everything in between. You don't need to be uh, experienced. You can start from zero and you will literally be with your very first day writing real working code in minutes. And I think that's very important. When you hit that submit button, you'll know immediately. Instant feedback. Did your code work? Why not? You get feedback so that you get on the right track. SQL, JavaScript, I mentioned Python, HTML. Uh, but here's a great way to start. Go right now to codecademy.com, C-O-D-E-C-A-D-E-M-Y.com. Use the promo code TWIG so they know you saw it here. You'll get, they have a little programming personality quiz, which is nice because it's not like testing you for math. It's merely... Uh, asking about your how you think, what you like, what, and it will help you decide what area to go into. When Lisa did it, it knew immediately she's a numbers person. They said you should learn R, you should learn statistics, you'd be, be good at this. They said I should I should get into um, computer science and algorithms. They're absolutely right, absolutely right. That's my my passion. So the course recommendations after you take the quiz will be based on things that you're interested in. It's really cool. Uh, it's an interactive platform. As I mentioned, you're going to learn by doing. You can build your portfolio. When you build those projects, it's great to get them up on GitHub. People really do look and see what have you done to see if they want to hire you. You'll also get a certificate of completion. You can put that in your LinkedIn portfolio or your resume. Uh, it's a great way to get a dream job in web development, programming, computer science, data science, tons more. And it's just a lot of fun. I really think they've nailed this platform. Join over 50 million people learning to code with Code Academy. See where coding can take you. You can get 15% off your Code Academy Pro membership. Just go to codecademy.com. Use the promo code TWIG, T W I G. Uh, you'll get 15% off Code Academy Pro, and we'll get uh, the, the little pat on the head from sending you there. And that's important to us. So please. Codecademy.com, promo code TWIG, C O D E C A D E M Y. Codecademy.com. Great way to learn how to code. Best thing you'll ever learn, I got to tell you. So much fun. Uh, let's see. Um, have I told you the story of the LAPD cops who, instead of <laughs> answering a radio call to a robbery in progress at a local mall, decided to play Pokemon Go. Have I told you that story? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> it's the greatest. This happened in 2017, but they appealed it saying, uh, hey, this uh, this in-car, digital in-car video system, which caught our comments and conversation, shouldn't be used against us. Uh, so oh, it's they a privacy case. Yeah, it's a privacy oh. case. Oh. California Appeals Court upheld the firings from four years ago. Um, so, and I, you know, I guess it is a privacy uh, thing, but um, yep. on the other hand, I think public safety uh, officers, uh, we, you know, we make them wear body cams. There's good reasons for that. Yeah. And, and honestly, they, <laughs> there was a little malfeasance here. They were on a patrol <clears throat> Uh, when a radio call to respond to a robbery in progress with several s suspects at a Macy's in the Crenshaw Mall came in, <clears throat> they told their supervisor they didn't hear the call, but the recording showed they ignored attempts to reach them. This is from the actual court ruling that came down this week. <laughs> After communications made a second attempt to contact petitioners, Officer Lozano asked if they should... Ask communications if there's a message. Officer Mitchell replied, well, it's up to you, whatever you think. I don't want them to think we're not paying attention to the radio. Lozano responded, ah, oh, screw boy. it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Officer Mitchell alerted Lozano that Snorlax, a Pokemon Go character, had just popped up at 42nd, 46th and Laymart. Um <clears throat> we have priority. All after, units, all units, all units. Four last, 46 <laughs> after, and later. After noting that Lamar doesn't go all the way up to 46, Lozano said, oh, you know what I can do? I'll go down 11th and swing up on Crenshaw. I know a way I can get to it. Mitchell suggested a different route, told Lozano, we got four minutes. For approximately the next 20 minutes, the in-car video system captured... 
petitioners discussing Pokemon as they drove to different locations where the virtual characters apparently appeared on their mobile phones. On the way to their Snorlax location, Officer Mitchell alerted Officer Lozano that a Togetic had just popped up just south of 50th. <laughs> Mitchell silly. caught the Snorlax, okay. exclaiming, got him. <laughs> And then, wow. let's go get the Togetic, and they drove off. When the car stopped, the recording recorded Officer Mitchell saying, don't run away, don't run away. Lozano described how he buried it and ultra-balled the Togetic before announcing, got him. Mitchell advised he was still trying to catch it, adding, holy crap, man, this thing is fighting the crap out of me. I think it's, I think there's movie <laughs> rights serious? to be purchased yeah. here. Eventually, Mitchell exclaimed, holy crap, finally... Apparently in reference to capturing the Togetic, and he remarked, the guys are going to be so jealous. Oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> We're boy. unemployed. So oh, the crooks boy. got away, the Togetic, not so much. The Togetic, not so much. They A lot of people don't realize, I don't know how this affects law enforcement, but in the United States, the laws are very friendly for surveilling uh, employees yes. uh, in general. Yes. And so... You know, for, first of all, part of it is the dereliction of duty, apparently. Part of it is the use of, of taxpayer-funded resources like yes. gasoline to chase uh, mm. Pokemon characters and so on. Mm. So, you know, I, I, I don't think this is really so much of a privacy issue, right? They were, on, they were, they were in a, in a police-owned car using police-owned equipment to actually do something purely their hours in dereliction of of you know public safety. So there there is a notice that they were given that uh for this the the, the DICVS system is used uh, as a tool for crime documentation and uh, prosecution, not to monitor private conversations. But there is a notice that says it won't be used to initiate a personnel complaint investigation or used against an employee in the adjudication of a personal complaint unless there's evidence of criminal or egregious misconduct. Uh, and the court said uh, that notice is sufficient to protect for minor, you know, or private, purely private com communications but it's too much to ask that commanding officers be forced to ignore egregious misconduct that is in a, unintentionally captured on the recording. So the court said, no, no, you can fire these guys. In fact, they did four years ago. But they got the Snorlax, and that's that's really all that matters. Yeah. That's all that they cared about, <laughs> clearly. Can you, can, you imagine, can you imagine the conversation at home? You got fired for doing what? <laughs> in the, in all fairness, uh, this is 2017. Pokemon Go was all the rage. I remember Lisa and I, many of the times we've come into work late or had to stop somewhere. To, <laughs> Dereliction of duty. Dereliction of Speaking duty. Of, we've done it. While, I admit while Jammer it. Jammer B sitting there in the booth waiting. <laughs> <laughs> There's no Leo. Still waiting. <laughs> Interesting um, new plan from... Wise, W Y Z E. We're fans of them. I would, uh, I would uh, love to get Stacy's take on this one as well. Well, she'll be back next yeah. week. We'll, we'll. But um, we love Wise. Wise's stuff is very inexpensive. What I didn't know is, after nearly going bankrupt during the onset of the pandemic, we launched Cam Plus, our premium service. It's a subscription service with AI and cloud storage features. Um, last year, after much soul searching, we had some of it a light bulb moment and started experimenting with a name your price concept. So when we gave a premium feature to users with no obligation to pay for it, many users voluntarily paid for it anywhere to support fellow wise community members. I think this is one so of the things. So this is the service awesome. part, not the hardware part, yeah, right? Yeah, the hardware you still pay for, but it's like they're cheap. There's like 20 bucks. Yeah, they're cheap. Yeah. Uh, and they, they almost went under, out of business. I didn't know that either uh, because of the pandemic. A lot of businesses right. have gone, of course. Um, and so they tried the subscription business. And then they thought, you know what? This is And this is a measure of the goodwill people have to wise. Yes. So the, they're going to expand the Name Your Price experiment starting now to all current users. It's called Meet. I'm sorry. It's called Cam Plus Light. 12-second event recordings and wise person detection at whatever price you choose, including zero bucks. But their, their faith in their customers who do, let's face it, love them. People love wise. Yes. Right. I think that's great. They're yeah. such an innovative company. It's, it's yeah. really astonishing. 
So uh, I'll be I'll, I'll be very curious about this uh, experiment. But good good I, on them. They're going to make a fortune. I also got another email uh, from Wise. It says, uh, "Where'd it go?" Is a free upgrade to something for AI package, including person detection, pet detection, yada, 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 for people that already have whatever this Cam Plus package is. Um, heck, I thought I was already getting that, but how much? <laughs> how much? It just says free. Free. Yeah, it's not like zero dollars or whatever you want to pay. It's just free for you. Yeah, this says, hey, Cam Plus users, uh, this is a free upgrade for being a Cam Plus user. Interesting. And hey, then I, that I, there's other what you just site. read came after that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Go Wise ahead, is going to start selling COVID tests. Yes, I saw that too. <laughs> well, Anything, they also sold masks for a while. Yeah. You know what, though? This is an example of uh, make a company people love that gives good value for dollar and people yeah. will help you. They'll support you. They'll stick with you. And they'll stick with you. Um, they think it's great. Good for them. They're also one of the few companies that's similar to Apple in the sense that if they come out with an entirely new product, people just buy it. Yep. They assume it's going to be a good value and it's going to work great. Yep. And um, that's that's pretty rare. They, they, you know, people don't wait for the reviews. They pre-order products in an entirely new category like the vacuum cleaner and all that kind of stuff and uh they've got really really a passionate user base nice i gotta also give a little credit if you want to learn to code to your son kevin's uh wonderful project this uh tell us a little bit uh about uh is it chatterbox chatterbox, chatterbox. that's right is it Thank hello you. i always re can't remember the url hello chatterbox.com hello chatterbox okay yeah, that's right. Uh, this is a smart speaker uh, for anyone ages nine and up. Uh, you build it yourself. It's The outside is made out of cardboard, which is very inexpensive. And once you've constructed it, you have a smart speaker that does literally nothing until you go to this Lego-like skills builder and build any skills you want. It does it does anything any smart speaker does, but you have to build each and every skill yourself. And in doing so, children learn that AI is just something that's been programmed by a person. They learn how they work. They learn all the parts. <laughs> and it basically teaches what, what Kevin calls AI, AI literacy. So kids who are alive today are the first generation ever uh, to grow up in a world where a artificially intelligent voice is talking to them every day. And so it's important for this generation, especially to understand what it is that's happening there, because this is the interface that's going to be with them their whole lives. And they learn all kinds of STEM skills. They learn logic skills. They learn so language cool. skills because they're they're basically constructing conversations. And it's very flexible. So you can say things like if I say, what's the weather? How's the weather outside? Do I need an umbrella? You can you can have any number of things that trigger the response to go using APIs to get the weather and so on. It's what easy. ages? What age? Is, these are pretty little Nine kids. years old yeah. and up. Now, yeah. I, I'm guessing that uh, a lot of customers are adults who, who just want a smart speaker that's super <laughs> it's private. fun to pray, play with, yeah. Super fun to play with. and But but it's it's really targeted at schools and and um, and also parents who want to buy one for their for their kid. And again, anyone who wants to tinker. I mean, it's, it's very... Um, if people want to to use a Raspberry Pi, for example, there are a lot of Raspberry Pis out there. This is based on Raspberry Pi. This is like the most fantastic thing ever to get. You can get the, the version that has no Raspberry Pi with it if you've already got one and just use the Raspberry Pi you have. But it's really fantastic. And it has some features that actually Alexa and some of the other smart speakers should have. For example, it's got a button on it, so it doesn't listen until you press the button. I really like that idea. I and agree. And then yeah. all the communication is disentangled from the user, so there's no way for Chatterbox or any of the companies that uh, that have APIs that Chatterbox accesses. There's no way for anybody to know who's using it. So there's no possibility of monetization, of privacy and uh, violation or any of that stuff. So it's very, very secure. And one of the things that Kevin talks about is that it's, it's a good idea to get kids used to the idea that the privacy is not being violated because part of the Ronald McDonald business model of a lot of companies is just by the time kids are old enough to make their own decisions, they've been, uh, they've been 
surveilled. They've been their their data has already been collected. Their biometrics have already been collected. You know, this is true of people by the time they're ten years old. All this has already happened, and they're used to it. And this is, you know, this is by design. This is this I think is why Amazon, for example, has all these children's products. They want kids to be used to the idea that. You know, their data is being used and then it's being used for marketing and so on. And so Chatterbox doesn't do any of that stuff. It gets kids used to the idea that they have total privacy. Love it. Hello, yeah. chatterbox.com. And, uh, and of course, Mike's the gastro nomad. He'll be off to Morocco. When do you leave? Well, uh, we're going to leave in uh, next month. If you can. Uh, I think on the 16th, <laughs> if we can. We're yeah. going to Spain for a little bit and then we're nice. going to Morocco for a while. We always spend a lot of time before the experiences uh, to touch base with everybody, to make sure that everything's awesome. And so we're looking forward to that if it happens. Nice. We think it will. But nice. Keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. It was so much fun going to Oaxaca. Yeah. I can't wait to do more. I'm so glad. Yeah. I had a great time. Yeah, uh, me too. With you guys. It was so, really fun. so great yeah, to spend time with wonderful. you. sounded wonderful. Yeah, you saw us dancing yeah. to the pulque. <laughs> 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 that was before the show, thank God. Jeff Jarvis, a number? So uh, this week, uh, Jack, uh, the one named Jack, at Jack, Jack Dorsey, yes. uh, just tweeted simply a link to a Tech Republic piece, how to standardize on UTC to support remote work, which makes perfect sense that we hear about UTC on the show all the time. And it just brought an idle curiosity to mind because it struck me that UTC is the, is the, is the successor to Greenwich Mean Time, which is an incredibly colonial way to look at the world. Yes. Right? That, 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 that's where that's it's why we use so UTC, wonder, yeah. Um, well, but even though it is Greenwich Mean still, right? Right. Um, so I wonder what is the most populous uh, time zone? Oh, like that should be where it's got a, that's UTC, the center, of the, that's the center right. of the world. Yeah. What is so the it most is UTC plus eight here, uh, which covers no. 1.7 billion people, 24% of the world's population in that time zone, parts of Indonesia, East Timor. Western parts of Korea, parts of Northeast China, Eastern parts of Western Australia, Singapore, Malaysia, um, Inner Mongolia, some parts of Russia. I think that's more fair. I mean, I wish we just use of the world's UTC everywhere, but that would confuse people when the sun rises at 2 a.m. and stuff. But uh, so UTC plus eight, UTC should start there instead of. That's England. the center of the world. <laughs> That's yeah. the that was just an world. idle curiosity. And, and God bless the Google. I look and it took one second to find that. If you want to disrupt the fewest people, a quarter of the world's population, UTC should start there. And 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 uh, I wonder where, where, so so what is UTC to Australia? Is if you're, where does, uh, is it Sydney where we always see the first um, New Year's Eve stuff? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's, that's the... It's uh, actually that's farther east. It's the uh, yeah. this time zone is the easternmost parts of Western Australia. <laughs> so Sydney is UTC plus eleven. Yeah, that's a big difference. Three hours difference. Yeah, I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah. So it's just yeah, a interesting. Curiosity. I actually had a number two. Yes. This is from Ben Beharan, who uh, is actually quoting a Morgan Stanley note mm -hmm. on autonomous vehicles. Morgan Stanley said, autonomous cars are the mother of all IoT AI projects. But this is the number that's interesting. It'll unlock more than a trillion hours a year of human attention. Which, we, we, which is a, a, the scarce commodity people want to buy. We spend that much time driving. Yeah. Uh, Morgan says, we forecast total human hours, including passengers, spent inside cars will rise for more than 600 billion hours today to nearly 750 billion hours by 2030, 1.2 trillion hours by 2040. What's an hour of human time worth in a car with nothing to do? Depends on what you ask. And this is just our view. 1.2 trillion hours times anything is a very large number. I guess I would uh, invest in audiobooks. <laughs> But that's why they want to put screens in these cars so you can surf the web and so but, forth. But that that number is the answer to the question, why would Apple yes, have a car? Exactly. That's exactly oh, yeah. right. The car is going to be as could be as important to them as the smartphone. You might spend Apple, more time. Apple can either get a big piece of it or they can just cede all that attention right. to who knows who. Uh and it just shows you again, Google going, What? Huh? <laughs> what? What do you mean? <laughs> what are you talking about? 
Oh, Lord, Google. Oh, Lordy, Lordy. We, we could do... Uh, oh, watch out, watch out, watch out. In line 120... Oh, 123. There is no line 123. Oh, yeah, there, there is. There is now. There is an... <laughs> I have a TikTok. I have a TikTok for every occasion. Tick technology was never supposed to make your life easier. People whose jobs have been basically looking at a screen at home have been told by Boris Johnson that they must now go back to looking at a screen in a bigger building, miles from their house. <laughs> and that they must go to this building. <laughs> All right, you win. Okay. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Ant, your thing of the week. Your things of the week. He's muted. The oh, shout out muted. to there my man, go. Mr. Steve Brazel. And, oh, I love uh, Steve. Kamareczka. Yeah. Uh, they had me on their show last week. They're behind the shot TV and an image critique show. And folks, if you're getting into photography, having your images critiqued is really, really important because a lot of times you, you put your stuff up on social media and everything and and you just get all the likes and so much nice shot and blah 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 but you're not necessarily growing because there are some things that you can do better with your photography and having other photographers critique your shots can help you out they're not trying to be mean not trying to be rude or anything like that but i highly recommend have some regular image critiques, and his show I'm does a good job of that about that. once a month, and I was on. Steve does great concert photography. Oh, uh, yeah. So you weren't a subject. They weren't critiquing your... You were part of the judging panel. I was part of the panel, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was part of the panel. Nice. Uh, we have the link to that in our show notes. And next up, Hardhead was a model for me and Mr. Jefferson Graham. Jefferson Graham was on my show, Hands On Photography, a handful of episodes back. Uh, we went out to Balmy Alley here in San Francisco and did a photo shoot, um, which was sponsored by Flipboard and this all is that a good great stuff. Shot. And, I love ooh, this shot. And Hardhead just had a ball because he's so into fashion and photography he and is all a, that. I have to say, I mean, I haven't seen him in a couple of years. He's This guy is all grown up. He looks great. <laughs> Very <laughs> handsome. There. Very good he's looking boy. There. I'll tell Thank you. you wow. He's got good genes. Is he in college now? He's in college. <laughs> yes, he does. Yes, he does. He's in, he no, needs, he's a sophomore in high school. He's in a high a school kid? Look at him. Yeah, he's a great. sophomore in he high school. Great. But, you know, we'll link to that to show you um, that photo walk. It's on it's on his YouTube channel. Um, and I put a couple images on my website, antpruitt.com, um, that we shot. And it was all based on smartphone um, photography. So... Some pretty good stuff there, and we even made a clip, uh, Flipboard magazine that people can contribute to and share their stuff if they'd like. What a handsome fella walking around <laughs> yeah. the city. I bet you had to there beat him off with a stick, didn't you? <laughs> he, so hey, he's he, like into fashion? Yeah, he loves he loves fashion. He loves photography, and he's, he's interested in just design awesome. for fashion as well. Uh, he bought himself a sewing machine two Good years for ago. Him. So he, he oh, he'll be he'll be at uh, in New York soon. Yeah, I don't doubt. I yeah. don't mind. Right now, his goal is to be an Oregon Duck so he can run track and play football. But the, I thought the, you were going to say Oregon donor. I'm glad you no, said no, Oregon, Oregon Duck. duck. <laughs> 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 Whoo, that was a relief. Okay, because that's no, no, not no, no, that's no. not a good image. And you actually have some more pictures on your uh, Instagram as well from that uh, shoot. Here you are in Baldwin uh, Alley. Yep, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So give me a follow up on Instagram, ant underscore Pruitt, and you can see some of those images there. It was a lot of fun with Mr. Um, Jefferson Graham and had some tamales. It was, it was, it was a very nice day. Very what nice fun. Day. And he made a video on his YouTube channel. Mm hmm. Good. If you go to the link in the notes, it'll, it'll send you to his video. We'll put those up on the show notes. Thank you, Ant. Ant Pruitt, ant underscore Pruitt on Instagram. Uh, of course, on Twitter and then twit.tv slash HOP. And of course, here every Wednesday. And community manager in the fabulous Club Twit, you've That's got right. a busy week coming up. Boy, do I. <laughs> Tomorrow we have our book club with Mrs. Stacy Higginbotham, where we're going to talk about autonomous. Have you finished it yet? Handily. I am about 30 minutes shy of finishing nice. the audio. <laughs> it's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> I, I have thoughts. Okay. And I will share those okay, thoughts good. on good, the good, good. book club. No spoilers. No spoilers. Yeah, not going to spoil. Okay. But I, I do have thoughts. Yeah. And then Friday, 
uh, Mr. Andy Anatko and I are going to sit down. We're going to do an AMA for our club twit members for ask Mr. Anatko anything and gotten a couple questions in. So if you're in our Discord, go ahead and put those questions in there right now so we can see them and get them queued up. You can listen live or uh, after the fact if you're a member of Club Twit. Uh, seven bucks a month gets you ad-free versions of all of our shows. It gets you access to the Club Twit Discord, which is great for so many things. You, it is a behind-the-scenes chat during the shows, but also there's uh, conversations about every topic under the sun. Uh, and you get the Twit Plus feed where uh, you'll hear shows like that if you're not listening live. You can he hear them after the fact. And the Untitled Linux show and the Giz Fizz. I mean, there's just a there's just a ton of stuff. We've got something new we're working on that's going to come to the uh, Discord. It's going to end up being, I think, a place for us to launch shows, try them out uh, before we go public with them. So I think if you want to, you know, participate in the early beta testing, uh, that's just one of many benefits. Seven bucks a month. Go to twit.tv/club/twit. And uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, we do this show. I'm <laughs> lost. Lost my train of thought. I guess the Noah Tropics are wearing off. It's worn off. <laughs> it's worn off. We, we've now figured Where it out. Am it's I? roughly Who am I? two what and a half doing? hours. <laughs> <laughs> we do this show every Wednesday. It's the last show of the week for me. Uh, about 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2200 UTC. You know, I should start doing the plus, UTC plus eight, eight, eight yeah. which is 3000, 3000 well, plus eight. Uh, if you want to, you want to listen. Was that six a.m. Thirty hundred. Six a.m. in Malaysia. Hours? Yes, it's early morning in Malaysia. Uh, just to go to live.twit.tv to watch that live stream. As I mentioned, you can chat with us in the Discord, but also we have a, a live chat going on for all at irc.twit.tv. After the fact, you can download episodes from all of the shows at our website, twit.tv. Uh, for this show, it's twit.tv/twig. You find a link there also to the YouTube channel, which is a full-time uh, show of all of our video. You'll also find the links to various podcast players. Or you can find one of your own. If you subscribe in those, you'll get them automatically the minute the show's available, which is nice. Please leave us a five-star review if you're doing that so that everybody knows uh, about This Week in Google, which is only a little bit about Google. <laughs> we were thinking of This Week in Wordle, but... It seems like a lot of work. Just for I'd be screaming the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Plus Get off Twitter. my lawn! Off my Twitter feed, you jerks! <laughs> I'm sorry. What'd you say, Mike? <laughs> the, the acronym doesn't work either. So this twiddle, week in twiddle, 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 twiddle. twiddle, twiddle, twiddle. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next week on Twig. Bye bye. Android is constantly evolving, and if you're part of the Android faithful, then you'll be just as excited about it as I am. I'm Jason Howell, host of All About Android, along with my co-hosts Florence Ion and Ron Richards, where every week we cover the news, we cover the hardware, and we cover the apps that are driving the Android ecosystem. Plus, we invite people who are writing about Android, talking about Android, and making Android onto the show. Every Tuesday at twit.tv, look for All About Android. Thank you.